The Click R3 podcast is brought to you by the awesome community over on Patreon. To learn more about supporting the show, head over to spawncastnetwork.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Click R3 episode number three. Back from too many games, actually. It's an it's a, it's exciting time right now. Of course, being joined by Mystic Ryan. Yes, and I'm joined by John. Is me, yeah. The you <laughs> you uh you had more of an adventure than I did for too many games because you had to drive farther. For me, it's it's so close. It's like an hour drive. I'm there. I'm back. I didn't really think it think about it too much. But you had you had an adventure at too many games. Uh, the second year actually out now, so you're pretty much like a, a regular now. I feel like year three, you show up is like, oh yeah, that's Ryan. He's always here. <laughs> that's, that's when it's old news. He's, he's here. That's yeah, whatever. So yeah. I, uh, I, too many games, I think was a lot of fun. We did our panel. I, I did premiere that as well, but over on the, uh, the, the Spawncast Patreon, there is just the unclipped version because YouTube does not like the Hulk Hogan theme song. It turns out being in a video uh, <laughs> and they block <laughs> it in like 64 countries or something. <laughs> Hey, yeah, so, Sean should have thought thought about that before he just, just did he decide on the theme song or yes yes he okay yeah so he he song. screwed the whole thing <laughs> well I was like you know what if worst case I'll cut it and then just post it up that that worked fine uh, and then the other one was just, you know what we have an uncut version for Patreon there you go you can see Sean in his ridiculous Hulk Hogan entrance with his pants falling down while he's trying to like flex <laughs> on the stage I didn't even <laughs> think was... about that because when I went and watched it to to check in on it I'm like oh it just kind of cuts right to like you talking, Sean's already there. I'm like, oh, the whole thing was missed. And I'm, oh, I guess that's why. Yeah, YouTube was like, nope. It gave me the red exclamation point. And it was like blocked in 68 countries or something crazy. And I'm like, well, for the ones that's not blocked in, here you go. Patreon can have it and we'll, they can check it out. But otherwise, clipping that front part, that was it. Everything else was fine. So people really liked it. It was a good time. The panel was fun. Uh, I don't know. Some of those live panels that are basically like podcasts are they're a good time. It's yeah. a lot of fun. That they did a, the production did they did a very good job. I can't believe how many camera angles they got and the audio they were able to sync up and it was it was good. Like watching it back. Yeah, I didn't expect that they were actually tracking like even when me and Josie were walking around with the mics. So for the times that we would talk, they cut to us. I was like, oh okay. Yeah, That's pretty sweet. When when you started talking like on the mic, they got you like with the hard cam and everything. I was like, wow, geez, they were like they're ready. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> So that was uh, it. It was good. The too many games convention in general was a lot of fun. Ryan and I were looking. We actually, I, I, I bought some stuff this year too. I, I will say, Finally. I was. Uh, people were a little surprised. I, I did pick some stuff up. Got some of those unique pieces. What, which shadow boxes did you get? Because I got the link to the past and I got the Mega Man X three one. What, I can't remember which two you got. Yeah, I got the uh, Pokemon one and then just the the basic Legend of Zelda one, like the title what? screen basically. What was the which starter? What was it? Was it Squirtle? It was Bulbasaur. 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 Yeah. Okay. You, See, you have a, a profound hatred for Gen One. <laughs> no, it's not a profound <laughs> hatred. It's like my least favorite Gen, and I was telling the guy that makes these shadow boxes, I'm like, look, you got to add like different Gens here. You got to make a Kirby shadow box. I'm like, you're gonna get some easy cash out of us next year if you bring those. Because I'm a stickler uh, for this. You don't find Bulbasaur in the wild. You don't find any starters in the wild. So I don't, you know, it's it's like a cool shadow box, but the encounter screen where the trainer runs into a wild Bulbasaur, that doesn't happen, John. Mm, Sorry. It did for me and my Game Shark. <laughs> Happened all the time, actually. I couldn't get, I, there are Bulbasaurs everywhere. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> surprise there. Yeah. The, uh, I, I do need to get that Final Fantasy VII clean title screen shadow box. I told them, mm -hmm. bring it next year, I will buy it. So I'm hoping they remember. I lost their card. I felt bad because I couldn't remember the name <laughs> of their shop. Like, great. Uh, well, last time I checked, he doesn't he doesn't like ship them. But then he was telling right. us at the event that like, oh, I could ship it. So, yeah, that was my yeah. only thing. It's like, I, you know, I'll just, I would buy it from you if I could just do that. You know, pay you to ship it here. But that's the one I want. I have the those two. I think are really cool. But I want one with the, that's the logo. Those are two like scenes from games. I really like you got the really clean Final Fantasy seven logo shadow box. I think that yeah. looks awesome. Put it right and above my it toilet. Bathroom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my half baths. I put it right above the, the hey. toilet seat. I keep them guessing when they walk in. That's uh, <laughs> uh that, that that's fine. What was so I got those. I got uh GameCube games. I did pick those up. What did, what did you get at TMG? 
Yeah, that's the, that's the funny part, right? Because last year, I think I, I got a lot of games last year. This time around, I, I technically only bought two games out <laughs> of the whole thing. When you they're think about games, it. Though. Yeah, they're big games. I, I'll, I think I am going to probably mention that in a, in a separate upload. So okay. I, I guess for the sake of it, I can't say right now. But uh, two pretty like heavy hitters for me that I was looking for. And then the rest of the budget went to just Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And this guy, he went to every <laughs> booth that had even like a little, like a, like one booster pack on the counter and was like, Yu-Gi-Oh, was Yu-Gi-Oh here? Is there Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. And you got buried 80% of the time, but I'll give you credit. You were, you persevered and you found them and you got them. Yeah. If you look hard enough, there was like three or four vendors that had just like little twiddly winks of Yu-Gi-Oh cards since I'm getting back into the TCG. So I was like, Oh, it was, of course, there's going to be card vendors there. The ironic thing being that those guys in the back that had a ton of magic and Pokemon, like that's all they had, like on day one, I'm th- thumbing through the binders, just nothing but magic and Pokemon, which makes sense. But then that night in the Hilton lobby, those guys were sitting there playing Edison format Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm like, God damn it. Why didn't you guys bring any Yu-Gi-Oh! cards? That is weird. Do you feel like if they're into Yu-Gi-Oh!, they would also just sell the cards just to have, if nothing else, because they might want to open them themselves and like, uh, what do you part them out? You get the cards that are really good and put them in binders and resell them and stuff. Uh, I mean, did, they have did, it. Oh, speaking of which, they, did you get your did you get your card? What what card? Oh, like there, the, wasn't there I, a big card you're looking for? Yeah, there's the the chase card in Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. John, yep. I hate to break it to you, but I did not did not pull. Really, it. dude, you had so many of those bad. You had so many. <laughs> no, I, no, I only had two of those. I had two. I bought two booster boxes of those. The pull rate on the chase card, which is Dragon Master Magia, it's like one out of a hundred mm-hmm. boxes. So the odds oh were gosh. ever ever so much not in my favor. But I I didn't even get a QCR period out of those two boxes. I feel like you were stacking bricks of these Yu Gi Oh cards. Am I wrong? I feel like you had a bunch of them. Like you're like, well, like, you take them out of bags, like stacking bricks of money. It was like Yu Gi Oh cards. <laughs> so not, uh, yeah, not to spend too much time on Yu Gi Oh. But the one thing I can say is that I had two boxes of those. Then I bought another older Battle of Legends set. I forget which one it's called, mm. but it's the one with the Starlight Exodia set. Uh, and then the uh, the one with like all the Karibos or something. I think that's called Brothers of Legend or something like that. And then three Rarity Collection two. But the one Battles of Legend with the Exodia Starlight set, I did get a Starlight out of that. I got Yadagarasu. So for anybody that knows what the hell I'm talking about, you can at least appreciate <laughs> that I pulled a pulled I a got, Starlight. <laughs> I got a Yu-Gi-Oh game on the GameCube, the False Bound Kingdom, and I, I tried playing it. You did it. buy that. You did, you did buy that. I tried no playing manual. it. It is not a Yu-Gi-Oh game. It's, it's very different. There's no <laughs> cards in it or anything. You actually booted it's- it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to oh. capture footage for the the video I went over, just going over the the oh. stuff that I picked up. So I you're fired gonna, it up. Let me, let me you're gonna it. do a pickup video? I already did it. It's already out. Oh sh! How did I yeah. even see this? And uh, I, I, yeah, I was going this it. weekend. So. And I watched it back, and I'm like, that is it's not a Yu-Gi-Oh game. I don't. I feel like it's not because it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> no, have cards not. in it. You just have you just control your the creatures basically or the monsters, and it's like the strategy like turn-based RPG. I don't know. It's very strange, but I remember there being a Yu-Gi-Oh game where it was dice. It was like dice, like strategy dice monsters. Uh, Yeah. It was different. I don't know. Uh, but the game boy advance ones are the ones I remember playing back in the day. Cause that's the, those are the actual games. There's like a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh games that aren't actually the the card game, which was like super annoying, but yeah, TMG was fun. We didn't come away with any PlayStation games. (laughs) I know that's the ironic part. It's like, no, last year I got some, but usually I find like a, a game convention is always a great place to like see like cardboard based game, like boxed games, like so yeah. complete and box Game Boy Advance or N64 and things like that. So um, and since those games are like such high value, it's always like a better way to sort of negotiate and get like close to market value. So that way you're not paying the taxes and shipping if you bring cash. So you come out ahead normally if you are a little bit smart about it versus like buying the games on eBay. So Typically, I, I do try to like focus more on like <laughs> really Nintendo stuff when I go to these things. Sean ended up being the PlayStation uh, PlayStation yeah. that day. So that was weird. But, he did. Uh, he bought he has... that P- PS1 with the, the screen. It was a uh, it was a good time. It was awesome to see all the people that came out. There were too many people that came out and we had to, we had to like evacuate the building and go to the parking lot, apparently, <laughs> because we ran out of time. But we made it work, I think. So next, I did talk to the people there the next year. I think they'll give us more time inside. So if you don't have to go out in the 90 degree weather and like 100% humidity heat and stand in line. So. Yeah. 
that's the that's the hope that's the hope but that's uh that was too many games good time we'll be back next year looking forward indeed to indeed we will forward to it but while we were gone some playstation stuff happened so we're gonna go yes. through some of the the beats here ryan has a bunch of stuff down for it we'll give our thoughts on it and then ryan also has PSX uh, going to give it to you. PSX going to give it to you for us as well. Yeah. So this, I'm, that, I'm I think good. that should be the show closer. We'll save okay. that. Yeah, one. that works. That works. Yeah, I got a little bit, little mystery there. A little mystery. Okay, good shit for you. I think you actually might remember this one because this, this one's not nearly as obscure, but I think it's still a fascinating topic. But okay, let's dive into some PlayStation news while we were gone. Been about two weeks. Um, what we can say going into PlayStation Plus Essential July, the lineup's already live right now on PSN. Got Borderlands Three both PS4, PS5 versions for all these titles. So Borderlands 3, NHL 24, and Among Us, which, John, I'll tell you, this has this is probably the worst PS Plus essential lineup we've had in a very <laughs> long time. Among Us is interesting because it's like, isn't it game like $5 or it's something? It's a $5 game. Like, it's, yeah. like I'm, if you want this game, like, did you not pony up the five bucks? I mean, I, I feel know. like NHL, I remember I played, it's so funny, I remember NHL from way back in the day. And when it was out on the 360, that was an incredibly popular sports game. I just feel like NHL in general, the the video game has kind of faded a bit, or at least I don't hear much about it ever. I think one year I didn't even know it came out. And then people were like, oh, yeah, NHL uh, 23 did come out or something like that. Oh, OK, so I guess this just going into the service is like, hey, here you go. We'll just try it out. But Borderlands 3, I guess, is the big one. And yeah, I've already played that. So. <laughs> I mean, my problem is I, I, just, I just don't think sports games should ever be in the essential lineup or if they're if they're going to be like make it a fourth game. Sometimes they'll have like four games, you know, it's like mm -hmm. there's usually yep. like one designated as a bonus title and sometimes based on regions like one title is swapped out for whatever reason. But I just feel like sports games should never be in here. They, they're just like the kind of games that are like, you know, they show up every year more often than not. There's always that dedicated audience that like no matter what, they're always going to buy these things every year. In the case of NHL, like when you're offering this on a global scale, like who the hell cares about hockey outside of, you know, North America, basically not to pigeonhole people, but it's just, <laughs> I, I feel like there's so many things working against sports games on essential. I just, I think it's, it's always easy for EA to do it too, because they're like, Hey, it's hockey season's just about over. We're not going to get much use out of NHL 24 anymore. Here you go. Just throw yeah. it in the service. It's, cheap. it's just go for it. As everything about this lineup, I just it doesn't sit right with me. Borderlands Three is an extra too, I think, uh, somewhat recently or something. But that's also like a twenty dollars game or something. Yeah. I don't know. It just well, it didn't it didn't feel like it was Sony's big best effort this this month no. to try to get try to appease uh, PlayStation Essential. Yeah, they they these recent lineups have haven't been the the greatest. I'll say. I remember Which, they used, was it them or was it just Microsoft who used to tell us how much the all the entries combined were valued at i feel like that was microsoft for a while with games with gold and it was really sad because they would give us some of the worst games and be like this one's a 30 dollar game it's like is it are we sure <laughs> well, yeah when they use like the just the straight msrp from the store when when yeah. no, nobody's paying that price for it um now i, I think tomorrow is when we're going to get this confirmed but we do have a ps plus extra leak from bill bill coon writing for deal labs Typically, they're always spot on because I, I think like that just, on, yeah. yeah, they get this info from like the back end or something. I don't however, they always get this info. It's always pretty accurate. So it's only well, they only leaked six games. Surely it will be more. But there's Remnant 2, uh, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy 7 Reunion will probably be the headline title there. Pathfinder, War of the Righteous, Enhanced Edition, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, No More Heroes 3, and then Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes Complete Edition. I believe that's only, uh, these are all for the extra tier, so we don't know what's going to be on premium just yet. It's funny, that's the one I'm really interested in. What's on premium? What's the what's what's the PS2 game maybe for the month or PSP or so? Now now that we have PS2 games thrown in, I'm 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 very curious about premium every month just to see what they come up with. Although we have been getting a lot of them just kind of rated or kind of unveiled early through the back end yeah. stuff. So, I feel like if there was something really big, we'd kind of know about it now, but who knows? Maybe they can surprise us. But going back to what they they showed here, uh, having No More Heroes 3, Travis Strikes Again, and uh, Final Fantasy 7, Christ Core Reunion, 
those are good titles. Those are very good ones. I feel like to throw in there. Um, I've read it too. Unfortunately, I never really, I never really get too into that. You want, you want to be able to play that with some friends. I feel like that one, but Hey, if it's an extra tier, you could get some people maybe and just jump in and try it out with you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, well, yeah, with premium, I think we, well, I don't know if it's this month or maybe the following month, but like time splitters, no, not, not two, just time splitter straight up. That should mm-hmm. be coming in. That would so be that awesome. One, if that, if that, if that shows yeah. up here, I'm, I'm on board with that. That'd be great. That one was rated, but time splitters uh, with trophies. It, I love it. <laughs> I mean, to your point. Yeah. Now that we have, now that the floodgates are open for PS2, that's really where my eyes are, are peeled. But even then, yeah, I mean, I've, I've played like Final Fantasy seven, reading uh, Travis Star- strikes again, no more heroes three. So like, it's great. They're going in, but I, I'm just, I'm curious about these PS2 games. That's what's really caught my attention, which also probably lead to disappointment. If there's no PS2 game, I'd be like, Oh, all right. <laughs> but I just, um, as a premium subscriber, I have high hopes for it. Now that PS2 is there. Oh, can't wait for you to be disappointed. <laughs> I, I know. I will say though, if Time Splitters is there as we've seen it rated, which I mean that means it's coming at some point. But if it's this month, to me that's a win with the lineup here with extra, and then that as a premium title, that'd be really cool. Provided Time Splitters isn't like broken in some with some weird emulation or I don't know. I mean, I I will say Tomb Raider has given me some pause after I saw how that turned out. But then I see Sly Cooper, and I'm like, okay, Sly Cooper is, is pretty good. So I, I don't know. It's hard to say how it'll turn out. I'm hoping good. I'm hoping it turns out well because that's a game as a shooter. You need the you need the frame rate to not be terrible. So and it seems like the frame rate is like the one area that is like they don't boost it. Obviously, they don't they don't like unlock the frame uh, frame rate or anything or do some kind of weird FPS boost like Microsoft did. But at least like with Sly Cooper, where the game has some very unstable moments, it does hold that cap. So. Mm-hmm. At the very min- time splitters. Yeah, at the very minimum, we should hopefully see that. It just seems like the like, in terms of image quality, that's where they really seem to be dropping the ball with the emulation, which falls back on the one company that does this it's through uh implicit conversions with their syrup em- emulation engine. Do you think do you think uh we get something multiplayer related for PS2 emulation to open up at some point? I mean, I, I'd like to see that, but as as far as I know, for implicit conversions, they they don't they're not doing that right now. Mm. Although in th- I believe they 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 can do it, as far as I know. I mean, the thing I always like to consider with with how Sony's been doing this, because they obviously they're they're contracting this work out. You know, this company has to like <laughs> financially like go about this in a very fiscally fiscally responsible way. So to spend like a ton of time on one particular game and really spruce it up and get the sort of emulation I think everybody wants is just like not something that is like financially viable given like whatever budget they're working with. Quantity. They got to just keep yeah. turning them out. So Even, that's important because that'd be cool if they showed up and they're like, hey, this game where you might need a multi-tap way back in the day and get everyone together, you can just fire it up and we got to set up online play for you. That would be awesome for time splitters. That would be pretty sick. I mean, I... I would like to see them do that at a certain point and maybe they will. Cause I, at least like going back to, to mid 2022, like the classics were in kind of rough shape, but we've seen them very slowly, you know, improve them over time with various patches. Now trophy enhancements, um, the PS2 games now getting the save states and rewinds and things. So I think they're making meaningful progress despite it being slower than we would like. But what we can say, John, going back to Sly Cooper, Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. game apparently saw the biggest PS plus premium debut. Now, initially this was like sort of third party evidence because the, that one website, true trophies, they do this quite often where they track the, you know, these PS plus games and they just pull data from PSN and they're tracking like three, 4 million users or something. They do this in collaboration with uh, game insights. And so they determined uh, from their metrics that Sly Cooper was the biggest uh, debut on PS plus premium so far for a classic title where that uh, ranked slightly above the legend of Dragoon, which was the highest before. So it was about 2.5% higher for the total player count. Um, and it was the eighth biggest PS plus uh, extra and premium game overall. So number eight, even when you're considering extra titles, which is pretty high. Um, so that was third party metrics. Then recently we got some from Sony themselves on the PlayStation blog where Sly Cooper was the 20th most downloaded title on PSN in the US and Canada. So it was able to just barely crack the top 20 for top downloads. And you love to see it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, you know <laughs> what? I, I've said before, I campaigned for Sly Cooper all last episode throughout. Uh, this just this backs it up even more. I, I think 
I think there's uh there's some I think there's some interest there. And not yeah. even just from we call old heads, people like us who are like, ah, I remember those days of Sly Cooper when he was on console, he's a big name for Sony technically then with the PS2. I think there there's like a new generation who might find some interest in Sly Cooper. I do. Like it, I feel like Sly Cooper could be that kind of on the level of Ratchet and Clank if they did it correctly. Like in that it's not going to be God of War, oh wow, it's sold 12 million like rapidly or something, but I think it could be that nice mid-tier style game. 1 2 million or so sold and uh Astrobot maybe. Uh, maybe even actually below Astrobot cuz I think Astrobot's going to do something pretty pretty cool like i think in terms of sales when it comes out but i think sly cooper could be that game that doesn't cost sony 400 million dollars to make or something like it could be a cheaper <laughs> title yeah. right like i think it could be a cheaper title to make and something that doesn't take seven years to do like I, I feel like you can fall in line with that because i do think they need to start thinking in that way to sort of bridge the gap between these massive releases i think sly cooper is one that can do that. I don't think it needs to have a last of us part two story that is incredibly deep and taps into your conscience and your decisions. And like, if you, are you the good guy or the bad guy? It's like, you're Sly Cooper. You're just, you're just going through the levels, <laughs> you're stealing stuff away. It's, it's fun. There's, that's all you need. Just fun games like that. And then also contrasting games with like God of war and ghost Tsushima and last of us stuff. So I, yeah, I think this just shows that there is an audience and I, I think it's worth, Sony taking a shot at it. Well, we do know they track this stuff very closely, so it, it does bode well. Um, I, I just, I, I really hope it is something where, like, the sort of mid to long term, because it would conceivably take quite a while for this to really get going and the gears cranking. But, you know, because right now they, they, they sort of fill out that portfolio with just a lot of, you know, sort of AA tier, sort of. Mm-hmm. Not even indie style games, but what most people consider indie. Like I, I say this all the time, but like your Stray, Chia, Canterbury Spirits, things like that. Like those games still kind of fit. I, I would like slot those games like next to like what a Sly Cooper was back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously they just they they sort of do this in a more like risk averse way of just partnering up, not owning the the IP outright and completely funding it from the ground up and things like that. But I think it does bode well for the company exploring this further. I mean, seeing things like Astrobot or even with Sackboy Big Adventure, I mean, let's just, you know, let's start putting some money back into these kind of properties again. I mean, I think my only, the only hang up might be, who do you have make it? Like, that is the hang I think up. that's kind of an issue because you could look at all the different studios they have now, their top studios. I don't know if anyone's like, oh yeah, we definitely want to work on Sly Cooper now rather than this new IP that we have that's geared towards a mature audience and a big spectacle series or something. Even then, splitting off, a lot of these studios aren't necessarily even working on two games necessarily at once now. Like, especially if you have, you know, Insomniac, while they are spread thin, as we've seen them, they're still like a Marvel, 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 you know? So it's... uh. Sucker Punch, they're all Ghost Tsushima too, we assume. Like they're kind of like one game right now. Uh so Naughty Dog obviously now is like, okay, we're I guess this new IP, but even they were like, we're either gonna work on single player, we're gonna work on multiplayer. So it doesn't sound like they're thinking we're gonna go to all these different games. So that's tough. I don't know. I'm not sure who you have make it, but I, I do think it's uh it's worth exploring either way, even if you maybe contract a studio to make it and you hold it, the idea. Yeah, that second yeah. party kind of relationship. That might be the way. This is always the issue I find with with a lot of diehard PlayStation fans is, you know, Sony owns a lot of IP. This is one of them. And there's always like a lot of shouting from shouting from the rooftops of like, bring this game back, bring X, Y and Z property back. But th- there's clearly no room for that in the, the current lineup of studios. It's going to go up to somebody else. There's always a little bit of, you know, fear and uncertainty with that in terms of how they're going to handle the IP and take care of it. Usually if the original studio is still around, they can sometimes oversee development and give them some, you know, kind of roadmap on what the character would do, how they would talk, what kind of gameplay elements they would, you know, be okay with, like how uh, Bend worked closely in collaboration with Naughty Dog for like Golden Abyss on Vita. So it's just like there's a lot of articles that like really get in the way of doing something like this. So it's always like a reminder, a reminder of like all these IP you want back. Like there's just right. The way that they have to go about doing it, it's just they, they can't conceivably do it for all these IP. It's just a, it's going to be a very carefully, carefully orchestrated game to make sure that even just one comes back in the right way. You'd have to go get like a 
even that like a platonic or something but they are like they're doing some ukulele stuff now i don't know it's it's tough to find someone to still make that kind of game even kind of that old school 3d platformer now like this is not as common to find in that kind of double a space usually they're just like completely indie at that point and i guess technically it's like borderline double a then right nowadays but yeah. it's just to find someone who would still be able because sly cooper does have sort of that that personality to it that feels very much like it's out of early 2000s so to still retain that now in you know 20 we'll say even 2026 or something if they were actually working on behind the scenes that'd be difficult it'd be it'd be a, you'd have to thread the needle for that i don't i don't know how many studios could make it actually work yeah and it, and it kind of goes back to like sanzaro's off the market like ready at dawn's you know off the market like a lot of studios that they previously worked with aren't you know viable options anymore there's just like so many hurdles when it comes to actually getting something like this across for even just one ip much less you know all the other ones that we would like to humor remaster time just remaster all of them <laughs> just start dropping them on the ps ps5 versions of these things <laughs> well good segue john Let's talk about this PS3 emulation rumor because PlayStation mm. 3 is home to many PS2 remasters. And folks have often wondered, why don't we just get those games? But they were made on PlayStation 3 and we can't emulate PlayStation 3. So initially, this was a rumor from Nick Baker from Xbox era. He mentioned that he had heard it's coming for select PS3 titles. Then um, Jeff Grubb mentioned it during Game Us Mornings and he you know, kind of echoed the same thing, but this actually dials back to a rumor about two years ago where Jeff was one of the first people to like say, and when I say this, I mean like, you know, somebody that oftentimes can be seen with some credibility, you know, calling out state of play shows or showcases coming out very soon and things like that. Um, which we're really just splitting hairs, obviously at that point, it's just a matter of there, it, there's more conversation going on again about PS3 emulation. Um, now, I had mentioned this on LTPS like the two weeks ago when it happened, and then also a separate video right away because this is a topic I've covered so many times. Um, but what I had said on that video was then echoed from Digital Foundry. Oftentimes, they're seen as, you know, kind of an authority on these kind of topics on the more technical side of things. Um, basically saying the same thing, which is, you know, PS3 emulation is still quite difficult to, you know, do, uh, especially with the kind of hardware that we're working with. Um, but before even like, I guess, diving into the minutia of it, where do you sit on the whole emulation topic for PlayStation three? I feel like that. I do wonder if this is still something that's kind of the, I don't say prisoner of the PS4, but I, I don't, I don't think this is an emulator that they would be able to put out effectively on the PS4. And that's, I mean, they got, they got PS2 emulation going there. So I'll give them credit on that. But this is one that I think would not fit into their cross gen plans so the ps3 unfortunately being this weird setup and system with the internals on it has just haunted sony since it came out like the day it came out there's been a ghost living at sony's headquarters just haunting them over this <laughs> as it's been either whether it was ports back then for third parties that ran very poorly or even up to now where people are calling for native emulation they just keep saying all right cloud streaming because we literally have server racks of playstation 3s that are still somehow alive <laughs> that's how we're delivering these to you uh to me i mean either way they're gonna have to figure it out because like these servers aren't gonna last forever these blades so i would like to assume that at some point in time these systems just become powerful enough to brute force their way to to playstation 3 games running even if it's going to take mark everything mark cerny has to make it happen because people keep pointing out patents that apparently are in the works or at least have been de developed and signed by mark cerny seemingly around some of this emulation but then there's also hey he had to figure out how to make ps4 games work with the engineers there at sony on ps5 and that was a whole thing so the patents fell in line with that i just i think it is about time they get ps3 figured out i don't ever expect to be able to put a ps3 disc in the ps5 as sad as that sounds because that is a really cool thing that microsoft does with the xbox where provided you have an xbox series x and not the s you can put the actual disc in there and it'll call to the server and it's like hey you know what? you already own the game go and download it it's like, okay cool i would like to i'd like to think that sony would do that i don't expect it ever <laughs> so i feel like we'd have to rebuy them because they would in their mind go well we want to make money from this so it's 20 bucks that's just how it is or hey it's in premium like 
at that point, if there's an entire PS3 section that opens up in premium, then it's like, wow, this has become to me much more valuable because that was such a weird time period in Sony's history that I think will be awesome to to experience again just on the PS5. Mm-hmm. Well said, well said. It's um, it's always such a complicated thing, um, you know, because like rightfully so, it's been how long and there's always this this like pent up demand, especially with Microsoft having done it, even 360 games on Xbox One, mind you. So, but I, I feel like nowadays it's it's pretty well known like how difficult the, the console is to emulate. But this is where like the 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 sort of hand raising comes in, and the number one thing that comes up every single time this topic does come up is our PCS three. You know, if you have a bunch of hobbyists that can reverse engineer PlayStation three, how how can't Sony do it when they've got source code, they made the machine, they've got original documentation, um, which I mean, it's, it's obviously like a a valid thing to say. What's funny is I, I often, I often find our PCS three is a great example of why they're still not doing it or won't do it, or it's not actively being worked on right now, which caveat to that emulation takes so long to figure out for these consoles like microsoft started basically doing this during the 360 generation they put in an an emulation layer in xbox one to to facilitate that compatibility um that's a very long roadmap i mean this is something sony would have to be doing now and have been doing for years for us to potentially get it soon or soon ish or on playstation 5 pro or god forbid playstation 6 you just need a massive cpu overhead for cell processor and you can check our pcs3 look at those games every time there's a huge you know because they have that little breakdown of compatibility right and there's a lot Mm -hmm. of games that are in game and playable now in game means they're, they're still basically broken there's problems with those games the ones that are playable that still has the caveat of like, oh, they could, they're like playable from start to finish, but you're going to experience frame dips. You're going to experience some hiccups left and right. Like there's still reported issues in those games. That's not how a platform holder wants to ship games. They're going to go through, you know, QA again. They're going to be recertified, resold to your point. Like I do not expect in any way, shape or form, Sony is going to offer the same kind of goodwill that Microsoft would. So you're paying for these things again. And then the other big angle of this is first party games. Now, that would be the kind of titles where you want to see those come back. You know, you want your Infamous. You want your kill zone. Resistance? But first, you, would, you want your Resistance. That'd be cool. I'd be but, all right, Resistance. That'd be fun. I'd love it. But they're first-party games, which means they use the cell processor. And I mean, they actually use they it. They use it a lean, lot, yeah. They lean into the SPEs. I mean, this is like something you can easily check on our PCS3. A lot of the first-party games have problems. Because the, the titles that really lean into the PS3's obtuse asymmetric architecture are the toughest ones to emulate. Ironically, the Digital Foundry guys made a made a really good point here, which is like, you know, third party games actually might not be like that's like a, a distinct like plausibility because a lot of developers back then like <laughs> they just use like the power processing element. That's the general part of the CPU mm-hmm. and didn't even like touch the SPEs. So it's like those games actually could not only be plausibly emulated but if anything maybe could see some reliable gains because a lot of those third-party games didn't run so great on playstation 3 but um it's just like it's when you have to think about it as a business too like for how long it would take sony to do they're going to charge you for it they're not going to let you use discs there are still so many goddamn hurdles here that i am just still not convinced that this is coming anytime soon if it is it's for playstation 6 it might be a ps6 thing yeah. Or maybe they're just thinking, hey, someday game streaming will be so good and we'll keep <laughs> these PS3s on life support for so long, it won't matter. It is crazy that they are still, the only way they're making this work right now is by having PS3 stacked up in a, in a server farm somewhere. Yeah, they made them. T- they made those m- over 10 years ago. And it's like not even so much like a maintenance thing. Like they're also probably incredibly energy inefficient, especially for yeah. like the, how like how I guess how little they're used. Because I highly <laughs> doubt people are playing those PlayStation 3 games that often. They're not manufacturing cells, so they're not going to build new, you know, energy efficient uh, PS3 server blades. Like they're going to go offline at some point. I, I can't. Would that not stress you out all the time if you're like one of the people at Sony who's, whose job is to make sure these things are always running because there's no backup plan? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, do honestly like if let's say a year from now which is not that far away like sometime in 2025 if we wake up someday and see a ps blog post for like 
you know, like, oh, here's the extra and premium lineup. And then there's like just a little thing at the bottom because this is how they'll deliver bad news. Uh, these games are exiting or PS3 games are ex- or or just like they don't say a single thing. And we just start <laughs> seeing them exit the service and they're just not coming back because they're, they're taking them offline. Would not be surprised if it happens in a year. So. Yeah, I just wait till those things just just fall over and don't work anymore, and that's it. Well, <laughs> send the write up the blog post in like five size five font, <laughs> shrink that thing down. Yeah. The that's the thing. The only good thing we have going for us in terms of like, you know, if it's going to happen, is that they have to do something. Right. I mean, you know, you would assume. I I, I think comfortably PlayStation Six is probably where where it would happen. Um, cause to your point in the beginning, like you're not getting these things on PlayStation four, no. <laughs> just no chance in hell. So if I like had to guess, you know, maybe PS six, um, cause the, the other angle too, like with all the patent things that you were mentioning before, like, yeah, everyone's always wrong about those. Every single time a patent comes up, that's describing backwards compatibility for like how a PS four pro plays PS four base software, or PS five on a PS4 pro legacy setting or something like that. That's what those patents always are. But if we see anything for cell or emulate emulating cell, the patent would probably like, we would pick up on that. But also I would imagine this would not be something implicit conversions would do. It would probably be a very like in-house in Japan, the hardware team. Yeah. Yeah, And Japan doesn't like, they don't talk like, you're not going to see rumors from them. We're not going to see speculation. Um, it's always my like I. It's always been my understanding that it, for the people I know, it's just it's not happening. Right. So we also don't. I mean, we also don't really know what the PS6 even is going to look like right yeah. now. It could be. <laughs> it could heavily lean into co-processors with AI, and all of a sudden they have a breakthrough there. And now, guess what? All these generations of PlayStation games run flawlessly on 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 native hardware. We don't really know because the AI stuff, while everyone's so interested in, it, is still very new as sort of this this co-processor co-pilot setup so i we need to even figure out what the ps6 is going to look like before we think it's oh this is this is it this is where the ps3 is going to be activated because they might still be again on the ps5 it's just like you said those jaguar cores did not up to the task so it, it would be ugly on the ps4 <laughs> well with that in mind let's talk about some more not great things playstation portal now if you remember we covered this recent firmware update where mm-hmm they actually unlocked uh, public Wi-Fi. So you yes. can go out to a restaurant, connect, play your portal, but it turns out you can't do that. Yeah, what happened here? What's, what's going on? What is this? So uh, I, I guess the, the problem is that, and we should, I we both missed this in the blog post, but there was like an asterisk on that feature where it mm-hmm. said it would only connect to 2.4 signals. Oh. Which, <laughs> which yeah, well, that on its own is like not good because <laughs> you want the best possible connection for this thing. But the, the actual fundamental issue is that most public you know, businesses are going to use the, you know, the single SSID for a five signal and a, and a 2.4. Yeah. The portal just won't choose the 2.4. Like it just doesn't do it. Oh, uh, so that means no, it, just, it, just, it can't handshake with it correctly. And it just it'll sits never, there. It'll never do it. Yeah. Somebody, uh, the game father is the YouTube channel that did this. He took his portal to like 10 businesses and like nine of them did not connect. And the one that did, he's like, Oh, I think it was just a two point. I forget what he said. It might've been like, it was a regular, like 2.4 signal or something. I don't remember what it was, but basically like it just didn't work like a Starbucks or McDonald's or wherever you want. Like I, I just can't imagine how, how did, how did this, how does this even happen, John? Does Sony still think? Because, uh, all right, the way I look at the portal, as I mentioned before, it really doesn't even leave the, my game room here much. It's just, it, it hangs out next to the, the you know, any of the, the seats that I have here. And it's just, oh, wait, I'll watch some on TV. I'll play on the portal if I want to play a PS5 game. Does Sony still, does Sony think that way too? Or they're like, no one's going to take this outside. Then they see all the response online. Oh, people are taking this thing outside. Oh, well, I guess we should make it connect to public Wi Fi. And then it's, and then it it's doesn't work. 2.45 gigahertz problem. I don't know. It's, it seems very, it seems very much like they're on their back foot over the idea of the PlayStation portal, leaving your house. <laughs> it's, just, it's a portable device. Technically. I mean, it needs the PS five to function, but I, maybe they, even in their mind, they're like, eh, it's, it's all local network. That's 
who's going to play this thing away from their house? And there's a bunch of people trying to do it. So it's just, I don't know. It seems odd that they would have this thing go out there and not be prepared for a basic public Wi-Fi spot. Hey, well, so here's the interesting thing, right? Is that if you check their, um, their site where they usually, usually like publish the actual like change log for the firmware, mm -hmm. they give a reason for it. They say it's due to local regulation and abiding by abiding by that, basically some sort mm -hmm. of local regulation, regional regulation or something. I guess it's some sort of like blanket, like, okay, if we have to agree with like one little fringe case or whatever in some country, there's just, I, what it wow. seems like they, they put a blanket coverage on the entire thing to say, okay, we'll, we'll only connect to 2.4. I really, I don't know what the, the deal is there. It Interesting. Seems okay. Bizarre. This is just one of those very strange things that like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is the Sony. I know that does weird stuff like this. Yeah. I guess, you know what next, if I ever, if I ever go on vacation, tell you what, I'll bring the PlayStation portal with me. So in six years, when I go on a vacation, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bring it with me. I, you know, I should have brought it to too many games just to try to connect it at the, the, the hotel there. I think about it. Yeah. But I, I, mean, I Ironically, now I'm I was curious just... to go around trying to just trying it at different places just to see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, ironically, I was at, I was in New York city this past, um, this past weekend and I live in Buffalo. So that's like a few hundred miles of uh, apart. And I, I brought my portal cause I was staying with a buddy. So that's residential Wi-Fi. So I knew that was going to connect and work just fine. And, uh, dialing back to Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm playing a lot of master duel, which is just a card simulator. So like that was not really something where like if there's input latency, which there will sure. be no matter it's like what menu based, right? Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's menu based. Yeah. Like it's just going to. And that was like totally playable, a very playable experience looked good because um, my home network, the upload speed is good enough and his download was was great. So like that was a use case that worked outside of my home network. Although I certainly was not willing to take a portal on the streets of Manhattan and just get rejected 99% of the time. So, well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm wondering if you set up at like a coffee shop somewhere. Yeah, I guess it just that, doesn't work. work. I don't know. Mm, Very take weird. That with me. I could be that guy at Starbucks. Doesn't <laughs> buy a thing. It's just there to use their Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, I don't even buy a coffee. Come on. I buy coffee. I'll buy, a, I'll buy a coffee. Okay. And then just not drink it. <laughs> What do, you, what, do you, what do you order what are you what are you ordering at starbucks John? do people still go to starbucks with their laptops i haven't, oh, yeah. actually haven't been to a starbucks like in a starbucks in a long time like okay, actually so inside you, of one so you don't have an order then you wouldn't you don't have well, a go-to we item coffee, we went to that coffee shop at uh too many games and there was there was somebody there with their laptops so like i guess that's still i mean yeah, it was that was really popular to do that when i was in like college to go to a, a starbucks or a coffee shop or something it just set up camp for hours and just work there and buy one coffee and that's it they might buy a second they probably like refill this <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer my question what coffee are you getting oh uh what did i, what did I oh what did i get at the coffee shop? actually I what got did you get there? and they handed me like this massive mug and they did the thing where they put like a heart in the coffee which like they you know they play with design and so stuff. so yeah, like latte cool. art yeah, yeah yeah it was it was some kind of latte i don't know it was um it's it was something i had a hard time pronouncing on their menu so it was good <laughs> <laughs> how much of a coffee guy I take it i don't know i go to starbucks and i, I go i give me a large something and that's a problem too so <laughs> I'm supposed to say like i have to look it up vente or something no you can say know. large they know they know <laughs> like that I, jerk I, I don't think any. Yeah, I don't think anybody uses me a large bit. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right, how about how about some good news here? PlayStation Stars is finally coming back. Good lord, thank Christ! Uh, it's coming back in in phased regional rollouts, is what Sony's saying. It's already back in Europe, Asia, and Australia. Still not back in the U.S., but finally coming back. And that's it. Nothing. Nothing untoward going on. Points were tracked and start redeeming. Some campaigns were finishing while people were still, you know, buying games and things. I sort of really know what happened here. This thing ended up apparently being down for as long as their great PlayStation Network right. downtime happened, the outage. I, 
it seems so strange with the PlayStation Stars thing because Sony is so nonchalant about it. Like, yeah, it, it's back. <laughs> like, it's that, back. there's no explanation. It's here. That, that's just kind of hit. And I guess it's because you know what this showed me is just not a lot of people use PlayStation Stars. <laughs> that's just all this that's all this showed me the problem is it's on the app like it's it's on the app right and it's just like a little icon that you have to like tap and then agree to like i'm sure they'll do this eventually but like put it on the console let me go to it right now i'm gonna double check what to see if it's up to make sure it's up i'm gonna do it right now in real time here we go it shouldn't be it shouldn't be up for us yep still down yeah, it is still down. Still down be ret- returning soon in phase regional rollouts. That's different from the last time I looked at it. So rather than just mm-hmm. saying it's down, it said that at least. Although I did get a little thing that like burst at me when I turned it on that. So I don't yeah. know if I got something. It's very splashy. Oh, actually, that might have been because I was doing the Astrobot update. <laughs> somebody, I found, I, the, I found the returnal thing. I, somebody said that. Uh, I don't know how. I, I didn't look into it that much, but I. I maybe there was like a loophole that somebody was abusing to like mm. accumulate points. And that's why they took it down or something. That wouldn't shock me. Uh, although I, I did wonder if it was in some way in their back end tied to the PlayStation rewards program for their visa card or whatever their credit card, whatever it was uh, where that would get you points. I don't know if in the, just in their database, there was something with tracking rewards that was linked together. And when they were ripping that out, they tripped something for, I, I don't know, but it, the timing was, interesting i guess because it was sort of right alongside that but it, i just didn't really see too i saw some people who mentioned it but it's not like oh wow playstation stars is down it's trending on twitter x and like you know people are complaining yeah, was, it wasn't, not many you know. people are talking about this did you see that you were posted on the uh playstation stars subreddit oh i this? was yeah oh cool because i actually noticed like someone noticed <laughs> well, yeah well that- i that did they, they, they yell about me? See if they yelled about me. No, no. The threat. The threat was basically finally we have like a big YouTuber talking about hey, it. I'm but here. Don't hold worry. on, hold on, John. And then the top comment with some upvotes was was me. Not well, not me, but somebody said Mystic's been talking about this or something. So uh, we we're the only two people. Okay, see, that look. we're giving this coverage. Basically, we were there. We're there for PlayStation Stars people. There's I'm dozens sure Colin of was us. covering it too. Dozens of us. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's got to be some places that we're talking about this, but it, it's very strange that like a lot of mainstream media did not really talk about it, or at least until it came back up. Mm-hmm. I think there were some comparisons made because it reached the time period of the PlayStation Network outage. I think that was it. <laughs> hey, Stars has been <laughs> down for as long as this, and then some of the comments were like, "What's PlayStation Stars?" <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. I've, yeah, I've seen people say, "What game is that?" Like, oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> what game is that? That's yeah, awesome. What game is that? Well, that's funny. It shows that people aren't taking advantage of basically free money because you should yeah, right? always, always sign up to it. I feel bad. Free all the money. people missed out on the Jim Ryan bobblehead. Man. I, they're missing out on all the collectibles and spending your your uh, your points on the collectibles instead of PSN credit. I mean, we've all kind of been missing out on that for the past month, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's coming back. Apparently regional rollouts. There's a lot regional of stuff, rollouts. a lot of stuff in the background happening there, apparently, and it's going to come back and my shelf still going to look like it's out of Photoshop 98. So gosh. <laughs> you didn't dress up your cabinet. Uh, you I know what? I, could... I leave my cabinet bare and I just have like one bobblehead thing on it. And oh, I just want a loser. Be, like, Look at what they give us. They didn't even like spruce this thing. It really does look like clip art from, from like wow. <laughs> Windows 2000. It does, but doesn't it? When you look That's at the cabinet, brutal. <laughs> it looks like Clippy like suggested it to me. <laughs> oh my, this is this is rough. You don't like they, the little dioramas? I can't, I can't believe they have a. I don't know. It was it was at first I was like, you know what? That's they got to They're just gonna figure it out. And and now it's been down for a month. So. They kind of told me they didn't care before, and now they're just like, oh, yeah, they definitely don't care. <laughs> it's just got to be like a skeleton crew maintaining it or something. I, I think it know. is. It's probably not many people who are like assigned to it, but I, I do think the idea is cool. I, I think this would have been something really neat to have tied to PlayStation Home. You know, back in that, we're talking about putting a little cabinet together. I think imagine if that was PlayStation Home, where you have the entire room and you're getting cool things you can set up and people can come by and check it out. And God, you are talking about two very different timelines here. I know. I'm putting the, them together. The, I'm helping you out, Sony. The trophy cabinet from PS Home, which never 
was actually a thing anyway. That that just seems like it, it would all fit together perfectly. I mean, they're all about monthly active users and engagement. Let let them let them actually have some kind of virtual trophy that's like, you know, personalized like that. I don't know. That'd be fun. You do. It's, it's your PS stars cabinet, and then your your regular trophies. Well, let's talk about these new line of PlayStation figures. In collaboration with Spin Master, a leading toy company, they're introducing uh, introducing the Shapes Collection, a new line of collectible figures based on iconic PlayStation Studio titles. Uh, the first one is going to be Aloy, and then also Varl, Jin Sakai, Kratos, and Atreus. Uh, Aloy is coming first for forty nine ninety nine USD. Uh, Pre orders are open now for her, and I think all the other ones are open now, and they're on Amazon. So. If there's any of these things that you want, you can go pre-order those. Uh, the other ones are $29.99, I believe. And uh, the Aloy one starts shipping in September. So figures. I saw I saw this announcement, and I was immediately like, that's Mr. Ryan's, get, Ryan's getting this. That's it. No, he's, he's, you're he's wrong. Getting, he's, what? You're not you're getting this? You're wrong. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, you know what? You know what? I know what the problem is. I okay, know what the problem is. All right. The problem is that these are not statues they're they're figures with the the elbows that bend and uh, you know how i know this because i saw people in the comments saying that and i thought you know what that is the that is the collector's mindset it it looks like an action figure not like the collectible that, this that's is what people what? were explaining to me in the comments and i was like yeah. you know what that's why I read my comments all the time because I learn these things from these dip. I'm not a statue collector person. So to me, I'm looking at the figures like, oh, it's kind of cool. But I know a collector's like, look at that disgusting bend on the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't you don't have any figures or not you don't like statues, nothing like that? Uh not really. No. I mean, I have there were like a couple of amiibo, like when the amiibo craze was going on, I bought like villager. <laughs> bold choice you bought that well, it was because that was like the one that was left so it was like that it was the amiibo time period where you'd go in to a walmart or a was toys r us toys r us was, i think it was around then and uh, you'd go in and there was nothing on the shelf it was all, all over the ground because people were like ripping and tearing at the shelves to get these things and i picked up villager bought villager villager ended up being one of the rare ones that was like expensive and i was like that's kind of cool <laughs> rip it open <laughs> All right, I wanted let's... to use Villager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wanted to use you wanted to use yeah, it. I used, like... I used him in the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is not the amiibo story I was expecting out of you. <laughs> I bought well, Villager. <laughs> I got Villager. Hey, that was it right there. I also got like Mega Man, of course. But you would think you'd think I'd have like Mega Man statues or something. I really I really don't. I, yeah, you I... know, sometimes I see those first four figures and they're like six hundred dollars. And I'm just like, that's cool. I'm gonna buy something else was six hundred dollars <laughs> like it looks cool i'm not gonna say it doesn't and if i was really into like i see the majora's mask one that looked really neat right having the from that looked great yeah but i'm picturing my kids coming in here just swat that thing off the shelf and destroying it so that's true i i, I always forget that you I, your buying mindset sometimes is directly influenced by what your kids may or may not do with those things yeah it's how yeah. how high can i put it up on the shelf without being concerned that it's going to take a spill and break because <laughs> mm. you got to get it up above like four feet or so to get out of their reach. That's fair. You are right though. So that's, that's why I don't really care for these. I'm a statue guy. I like it mm. to be, you know, a fixed position and I want it to look really nice. But even then I just am very picky overall with what I get because I mean, statues take up a lot of space, like a lot. You know, be a big you, fan of it. Yeah, you gotta like. I mean, you you gotta like think about where you're gonna put that shit eventually. And I'm kind of already tapped out. Like, I've got a few of them that are in my display cabinet, and I've got mm -hmm. a few that are like still in boxes behind me that are like aren't aren't properly displayed because I kind of you know got to figure out where they're gonna where they're gonna go long term. So like, I think even if Sony did more of a well, this kind of goes back to like their partnership with Gaming Heads. Those were like really mm -hmm. nice, high quality statues. And I sure, bought the yeah. I bought the Jack collection of those. So Jack one, two, and three. Those are in my my big display, and I like those a lot. And those are like super. Well, at the time they were like two hundred bucks a, a piece, actually, mm -hmm. which is um, I think they were two hundred. 
but sometimes they'll sell like a Kratos bust for like six hundred dollars, and it's like see life-size. that's like a little much. When you talk about like hundred to two hundred, I'm like, okay, I can kind of yeah. see that. Once you go to like, oh, it's almost a thousand dollars, I'm like, oh wow, geez, okay, okay, that's like there's like planning involved around that, and like, yeah. okay, where's it gonna go? So it's center of attention on this corner or something. I do picture some of this stuff as like good background pieces for like. Even for you, like I have it for like Let's Talk PlayStation, I have it up on a shelf or like behind you or something. I don't know. That seemed kind of fun. A big, yeah, big I mean, Aloy figure. They're 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 cool. I just I, I don't yeah, if, if I'm gonna buy a statue, it's gotta be mm-hmm. a property I really like and it's gotta be like a statue. So I, I never cared for like seeing the creases in their elbows and things. So this isn't Got for it. me, but yeah, at least it's a good option. I mean they're they're doing more merchandising. These are kind of similar to the I don't know if you remember this, the Totakus. These were basically the PlayStation Amiibo. Were those the little? I I remember. I thought I saw you post about it on Twitter, and they were came in little boxes. They were cheap. Were the, those? Were the I mean, cheap they ones? they look like in terms of presentation, they look just like Amiibos. They were like, like twelve or were they like twelve or fifteen bucks, something like that? Oh yeah, super cheap. I mean, yeah, I bought like is, I bought three of them. I bought three of them. I remember that when you posted. Oh, I was you like, have oh, well, I'll get it, please. Uh, they're all broken. <laughs> Okay. Kids broke him. Kids broke him. I, I got uh, Ellie and I got uh, the Journey one. Okay. Yeah, they, they did a few characters back then, but that was like mid PS4 cycle or something. That was a long time ago. So they don't yeah. do them anymore. But that was like the only other time outside of that in gaming heads where they like partnered directly with like with a company to do multiple properties because otherwise they've done like a few statues here and there with like uh dark horse comics i think that's like the last of us part two one i've gotten you know or collector edition you know statues that come with the game or whatever i think the statues that i all i was very close to getting like ones that were like almost a hundred dollars something were like the dragon ball there were some really cool looking dragon ball statues that i saw and i was like that okay that it, it, it was close i didn't quite go for it but i was i was close i was close that i think is the about where i would have probably gone with like the hundred plus statue is a dragon ball one that's just Ooh. a lot of nostalgia there and also the statues generally look pretty good like for what they cost and the fact that they they have a lot they could play with whether it's the colors or like the aura or the blasts and stuff they have i just i think those ones uh, end up looking pretty good yeah if there's one thing i i can appreciate like dbz statues there's so many options and they look amazing every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to some game news here. We've got Astrobot was recently rated by the ESRB in a surprise to absolutely nobody. It is rated, rated E no. <laughs> E 10 plus for everybody. Uh, the only news there means that, you know, it's, it's going to come out on time. It's not, going to see some sort of imminent delay right. or anything like that. Um, and the other thing we can mention for Astrobot is the second bot update came out. So now you can rescue yes. another VIP bot in I Astro's playroom. You did it? I did. I have the Bloodborne one, and now I have the Returnal one. And they're ready there to go. go. They hang out next to the portal that takes you to the sales page. They're just waiting. And apparently these four are going to be like your initial, they're going to be part of your team, they said. Like your initial bots that you get. Mm. So I'm I'm ready. They're going to transfer to the full game. So I'm ready. It was actually. Have you have you? Uh, did you do the Bloodborne one or the Returnal one yet? I so I didn't. I want to ro- spoil it for you. Yeah, I didn't do. I mean, I hopped into like capture footage, but I didn't actually save uh, Lady Maria just yet. So I was like, you know, what? I'm I'm going to leave them there. I'm going to let them all accumulate and maybe just do it all in one go, and then maybe maybe film it or something. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's okay. even worth the doing. The Returnal but... one was the Returnal one was pretty good. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, they 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 said. These they feel like the first two they've done were kind of easy to find. So the community just comes together on the Astrobot subreddit and they work together. And within an hour, it's it's done. Like they figured yep. it out. And it is kind of weird because it's like stand in this place for like 10 or 15 seconds and it'll appear. And then you have to figure out what to do from there, which seems to be like so for Returnal, it, it plays into the idea of dying and coming back. It's kind of like that. So that it was it was kind of a fun way to do it it looks like one of the so we have two there's two silhouettes one of them very clearly looks to be ape escape of some kind like is what it's themed towards i don't know about the other one some people are, are trying to figure out what that is so uh i'm that's the next one up we'll have one in august obviously and then september i think this is a really fun thing to do by the way to kind of kill the time to- kill time sort of while waiting for astrobot to come out because most of us are just waiting for it to get here so we can buy it and play it but having something like this to go back and you get a trophy 
when you unlock each one of these. So mm-hmm. I have two more trophies now. I think they're they're speaking to the right audience with this. You know, getting this game in the headlines every month with mm-hmm. again more PlayStation nods. I I am drinking this like milk. I love it. <laughs> You're drinking the Astrobot Kool-Aid. Yeah, I, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. It's killing me that I'm not doing them, but I'm like, I think I'll wait for the fourth one and then just do them all in one go. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. It doesn't take long. Like you can teleport obviously right to it, it. It tells you exactly which subsection to go to. I mean, now you can look it up, but even then it's like, Oh, go to SSD, SSD speedway or whatever and do it there. It was very quick, mm-hmm. um, but it, it was fun. It's fun. Uh, I, you know what? If, now I'm wondering if the main Astrobot game is going to have bots like these that you unlock in similar ways, or if it's because I assume they're going to have a main path through the game and there's gonna be like branching parts to it as well for each level. But if there are fun little hidden bots like these, I think they said it's like 150 plus cameos or something, right? Like, yeah. so we're going to have a lot of bots to unlock, but if there are f- ways like this to do it, that directly play into the game it's from that's really fun like I, i'm excited for a game like that yeah i, I believe the, the language they've already given out is that some of the more obscure characters are going to be like sort of tied to very difficult platforming levels which that, that also works. just that man yeah, that that already everything that they're doing everything right with this game so yeah so it's almost like the bots excited. are going to be like their own form of trophies kind of it's like you get a trophy for doing all of them but when you play through it once you, you get this new bot that maybe has something extra for you in terms of their ability or I, I, it, man, it sounds like there's a lot to this game. Now that I'm seeing the unlockables leading up to it, with these little bots that you get, I like, I'm going to walk in with a party from bloodborne to returnal to ape escape, something else, I guess, representation that are going to help me in the beginning of the game. That's this is a random mishmash of party, but that I don't know, man. I'm, I'm so curious about how this game is. I, I feel like we're not even 100% sure looking at what we've seen so far, how this game is actually going to play. We have a feeling it's just going to be like Astro's Playroom, but the fact that we have these bots that have different abilities, I don't know. I'm kind of wondering if there's a lot more to these levels than is like letting on right now. Yeah. I mean, the, the press only got to play like, now I don't remember exactly like what, two or three portions of, of yeah. certain levels. And they only got to use like two or three of the abilities, but there's like 15 total. So I think there's a lot they're not not showing just yet. But oh, the Easter eggs will be out of control in this game. I know. Man. It's it's going to get to like like sensory overload, just having so much on screen. You know, it'd be crazy in this game if we get to the end and they're doing like these final unlockables and one of them hints towards a new Sony handheld. <laughs> wouldn't well, that be crazy john, though if you john, go through you do them all and then there's like a little thing john, that don't, like don't 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 say stupid shit mentions r&d for the next handheld or something that would be crazy <laughs> oh jesus don't 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 say stupid shit what if they announced the ps5 pro in astrobot <laughs> you it explodes i was like the ps5 pro here you go Just i mean like coming out november t- 10th or something like that i mean no i mean based on the proximity of when the game's coming out i think it actually is a very real possibility it'll be in there well, you're not going to learn it from the game. <laughs> yeah, it would be funny, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be uh, awesome. <laughs> it will be cool, though. I am curious what the sort of finale of it's going to be, considering they got... I mean, it, I guess it depends on who you're asking, right? If it's, like, somebody that, like, grew up with, like, the PS1, like, then it was, like, crazy to see, like, the PS1 dinosaur tech demo, mm-hmm. right? But it, for a lot of others, like, I think people were just like, oh, what's... What is that? That's a cool boss fight. But so I'm, but I'm just, I'm curious as to what the sort of finale is going to be for this, and what exactly are they going to lean into, for, uh, you know, nostalgia's sake. Although, in, to be fair, they did say not everything is going to be, you know, strictly like leaning into PlayStation. It's still more of an Astro original story to a degree. So, Downey, I think Astrobot's going to do. I think it's going to do really well in terms of sales numbers and stuff. I had the the kids started up a new Astrobot file. They made their own account on the PlayStation so they could do it, and they're playing through it first time themselves so they are like Ooh. completely into the astrobot stuff now so now they now you. they have to earn their own artifacts before they can get just punch it mindlessly yeah yeah they're yeah. they're doing it they're working through it so they, they they're gonna kick out of it i think this is i think this is gonna be a good launching point for just team asobi in general i'm Let's praying that's what it, i'm praying that's what what's gonna be for them more astro astro supremacy yeah i'm, I'm here for it Let's move on to this. I'm very curious on where you sit on this. Helldivers 2. 
right? So live service game, a lot of stuff going on with this game. It's you know, still content updates and things like that. What I found uh, particularly noteworthy is that this was uh, about two weeks ago now. We finally got those headlines. What headlines do we always see for live service games? Uh, we had this one from <laughs> Forbes. After initial success, Helldivers 2 has lost 90% of its players with no signs of recovery. Eurogamer said Helldivers 2 loses 90% of its PC player base in just five months, uh, which the actual news being that, you know, it had a peak player count, a CCU count on Steam of 458,000. Um, right now, I don't know if you're looking it up, but it's probably floating around 30 to 40,000. So that does represent, obviously, a pretty steep decline. And those are only Steam numbers because we mm -hmm. st don't have PSN back. And we can assume we can throw in another like 40 something percent since the split slightly favors PC. But uh, there's another 40 percent of PlayStation 5 players. But that would still account for the, in theory, 90 percent drop. But either way, I found this noteworthy. You know, it's something where I think at this point, it's not even so much a PlayStation thing. I think any live service game like is going to be a victim to this headline. Are we just getting to the point where like it, this just seems like low hanging fruit? Like what, what circumstance does this not happen? Especially with like when a game just comes out and clearly like that's going to be its peak for a long time until a big drop, like a big content drop, I should say. You know what I mean? Like when, when is it going to not ever lose the majority of its player base? The conversation I find should maybe be more about where it levels off which right now it's leveling off at like, you know, tens of thousands of players still, mm -hmm. which I think any big AAA publisher would be ecstatic with. Right. So I, I'm curious where you stand on this whole thing. I mean, we go, we go through these a lot with these online multiplayer games now more than ever, because there's so many of them. There's constantly coming. We're always having attention pulled somewhere. So it was going to happen eventually for hell divers too, just like it happens to everything else, but it does go in like ebbs and flows. So let's say they do some massive expansion two years from now, or even a year and a half from now, the numbers will spike. And then there'll be articles saying that it's up 300% or something. So we will eventually go that to provided hell divers too, is I, I assume there's not gonna be any crazy thing where it shuts down or, you know, something like that years from now. We, we have this all the time though, because they, the comparison is always to its peak versus its valley and you just go by that percentage so it happened with i remember this happening with halo 3 back in the day when modern warfare 2 came out people were looking at the concurrent player count because halo 3 would just show you on the xbox dashboard and it was like half maybe a little less than that of what it's what it was initially when it launched and it's like well yeah there there's this really popular game on the market now and halo 2 or halo 3 is two years old now so we, we've gone through this, and that was 2007 and 2009. We've been going through this for a long time. So, I, I mean, I guess it is just that. It's like, oh, this is, it's easy enough. For, I mean, they're not wrong necessarily. And it's actually factually correct to say, hey, this is where it peaked, and this is where it is now. And that is a difference of, you said it was 90%. I mean, that's what the head, yeah, it would yeah. work out to 90%. Yeah, I mean, not, not necessarily wrong about that, but then if you look at it in context of if this is their resting monthly active user period, where I say resting because there's not any massive content that's come out in the last, you know, month or so or whatever, uh, then how successful is that for them? Well, if it's 30 or 40,000 people on at any given time, they're probably pretty happy with that. If you remember with, because Power World had the same thing happened and mm -hmm. uh where they're like oh power world's down 90 percent like hey guys we're still like we're still like a hundred thousand some odd people online right now it's pretty good they posted their server cost when it was at its all-time high and it was some crazy number for the month it was like tens of thousands of dollars just to keep this game upright <laughs> for the month so I almost wonder if sometimes for games like these where, yeah, there's still post spend, but it's not as aggressive as some of these free to play games. I almost wonder if in their mind they're like, OK, maybe this isn't so bad that we've leveled off a bit here because we don't necessarily think every one of these players is going to spend ten dollars a month just randomly over time. Uh, but it's uh, I think I think you're right in the sense that it's a correct headline, but it's also there specifically for just the, the engagement purpose of look at this game falling on its face, even though it's, it's kind of just 
hanging out rolling to where it's sustainable. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a, a fascinating thing. We see it come up so often and uh, I don't know. It's just getting to a point where I feel like a lot of people are starting to be a bit more mindful of like how, how often this comes up, but just conceivably like, when does that not happen? You know, for it's, it's almost like, you know, to, to, to label it as, Oh, in just five months as if like, <laughs> like that's like a very fast turnaround for it to lose 90% or something. Like right now, Hell Divers Two on Steam is uh, thirty-two thousand people are playing right now on Steam. Yeah, it seems pretty good because that's Steam and you still have PlayStation. Which, if we're going by the idea of 60, 40, 60 for PC, forty percent, we'll say even for PS Five, that's probably conservative. Probably still have fifty-five to sixty thousand people at any given time playing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a fascinating thing to consider. I, I'm almost Suicide Squad. <laughs> what's, that, what's that at? <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like even like even if the numbers are big or small, right? It's it's simply a matter of like, okay, that game is going to have a, a a peak count, and then it's going to level off and lose ninety. But you know, the I guess between the two, it's like, what's the bigger story? That one completely fell flat on its face, and ninety percent drop or not, like the game did not debut very well at all, versus the one that did, and its ninety percent drop leveled off to a a sustainable player count that is ideally right. going to be. Yeah, good. I mean, it's it's to your point, like we're going to see a content drop at some point. You're going to see the player count go back up. How much I think would be the more interesting news story to see how many players are willing to return. But I don't know. I almost feel like it's just getting to a point where it just seems rather silly to always like, you know, watch a game's player count just to just to watch it hit that expected 90 percent threshold. And then, boom, there goes the headlines. Yeah, I mean, wow! Shout out to Stardew Valley. Eighty thousand people playing it right now. <laughs> Jeez, I was just looking wow. at that. Hey, CC good for that. I was, I, just, I was just seeing like uh, in context, other like so for for example, Call of Duty on Steam, seventy nine thousand six hundred twenty one people, and that's obviously an incredibly popular game. Hmm. Just yeah, you know, like like a bit more than double on Steam what Hell Divers Two is at right now. I just Stardew Valley just caught my eye. I'm like, that's not even like. I mean, in terms of competitive multiplayer stuff it's it's not that so it, it's interesting to see it with a bunch of competitive multiplayers around us That's, although how serious can we take steam if banana has two hundred sixty four thousand people playing it right now <laughs> i guess pretty I seriously once it loses once it loses 90 percent. 24 hour peak was 391 000 oh my gosh whoa wow that's free though. All right, that's fine. No, I, th- I think Helldivers Two is okay. <laughs> I just think it's uh, percentages, headlines, engagement. It all works out for them, so they're gonna do it. <laughs> I suppose so. I suppose so. I'm just, I'm so curious as to how often we'll keep seeing stuff like this, unless there is more meaningful pushback. How many on copies just... they sold? They sold twelve million copies, right? That was the last time I heard. Yeah, twelve million. Still should be going up a lot because it showed up again recently in Circana's. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this would have been June, so yeah, it debuted You're again. Say like fifteen like ish million, probably minimum, probably right now. I'd say. Yeah, I'm sure it's slowing down, but forty bucks a pop. Yeah, I mean, Can't I, beat I'm it. sure Sony's like, wow, that worked really well, just from upfront fees of getting into it. Well, that's a. How about we move on to Concord, right? Because uh, the press oh. had some uh, some hands on impressions for Concord. And we also got the beta confirmation, which is this coming weekend. So uh, that early beta. I'm going to play gonna it. You're going to play it. All right. It runs from July 12th to the 14th. That's for people with pre-orders. So I'm guessing. I'm not playing got... that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play the open beta. Okay. <laughs> When's I was the just, open beta? <laughs> I was just going to ask. So you have a pre-order. But no, I guess Tony wants to send me the code no. to do it. Otherwise, the open beta, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. Well. You could play it during that time if you have a pre-order. And if you do pre-order the game, you'll get four additional codes to share. Uh, but there is going to be an open beta, which we now know John is actively participating in. That's going to run yep. July 18th to the 21st. And both of these betas are effectively going to be the full game. So that's going to be all characters, all modes available. And um, you can just jump in and see how you feel about the game uh did you look at any of the impressions so far how people are describing it i'm seeing a lot of folks uh 
you know, make references to Destiny, which makes sense given a lot of former staff or Bungie devs. So I guess the characters can have a bit of a floaty feel. There's a lot of like kinetic, you know, jumps or double jumps, but the characters are meant to be asymmetric. So you've got yes. some that can like sort of stall and slow down as they're like, you know, playing with the verticality. If you're a, like on a high point, you could jump down and then one can like levitate for a little bit. One has like a triple jump. So um, just really leaning into the asymmetry of it. And then the the narrative portion, which they're, you know, really pushing for this game is that there's going to be, uh, I think they said weekly drops where like every week when you, when you log in, there's going to be a new cutscene that furthers the, the narrative, the, the story, whatever narrative that they're trying to build. And, um, They'll also archive all that. So if you're jumping in, say, three, four months down the road, you can watch everything up to that point or something. Almost like you're jumping into a weekly, uh, you know, weekly series. I assume it's going to be more engaging than like Call of Duty when they do a new season or it was an update. You sign in and they and they you turn the game on in the heat with a cutscene. And I'm just like, skip this. Come on, skip. I'm <laughs> waiting for B to finally show up, and it's like, all right, hold the skip. I assume it's going to be more engaging than that. I will tell you though, the like the Overwatch lore, none of that ever grabbed me. It was to me always the gameplay itself because it's competitive in nature. I, I as long as it like the actual movement, the shooting, everything feels good there. Uh, I generally will give the game a chance. So I will probably be one of those people pressing circle or cross to skip the game, the cutscene in the beginning. But if the game legitimately is fun to play, I will say it is. So I, I know there is, there is this interesting thing with Concord right now where people are kind of already checked out on it to the point where it's like, I, this game could be absolutely incredible. And I still think there's a lot of people who would just, just kind of throw it under the bus immediately. So I, I'm going to give it a fair, a fair chance, Ryan, even though I'm kind of going into it with the, a lot of hesitation as to, it actually grabbing me, but are you, are you going to try this? Well, yes, that's the thing. Like this, this game is just like, not for me. Uh, well, so, I mean, I, I, I would assume I we can under the bus. Yeah. I, I, I assume we can have you <laughs> talk about the game that weekend. Cause that would be the next time we film actually, I think. Right. Or I don't know, somewhere around that time, but, uh, yes, it'll be after that weekend, right? Well, yeah. we can, yeah, the open the 18th to the 21st. So yes. Yep. I will have played it by then. Perfect. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Yeah. We can have you talk about it. Um, I mean, you play more of the stuff anyway, versus I versus me. So I'm, I'm not sure really how much my, my opinion like holds any water here. I, I just, I still find that like in terms of judgment, like just wait till you play the game, you know? Um, yeah. That's even when these impressions, they can try to explain it to me as much as they as they can. It comes down to when you actually pick up the controller for a competitive game like this, how it all clicks with you, how the the feel of the because I could try moving in this game and shooting, and I'm just like, okay, this feels terrible, and then I'll be checked out after an hour. Like that's well, so, how quick it is because there are so many games out there that are free to play or have an audience already that I can just go to. Do you, like it's it's tough to break into the scene unless you really have something here. So that's that's the question though is that if you jump in and let's say the first character you just on a whim decide to start playing with and you find that it doesn't feel good, I mean is that something where you're going to want to how many characters are you going to try considering three. it's like so asymmetric? 3 you're going to give, give him three. 3. I'll give him 3. Wow, three. that's st statistically that might not work out that well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give each one like two or three matches. So like I will have 15. I'll put a solid characters. 10 matches into this thing. And if nothing grabs me, then I would assume that uh, the, the common mainstream gamer would have probably moved on by then too. Yeah. It's, it's just, attention spans right now. How much stuff is being thrown at you in the free to play market, live service games. You just, you need to have a gameplay loop figured out and it has to be, interesting and rewarding almost right away or there's just so many other things that will pull people away from it yeah, and yet people are i mean sony's still charging 40 for it so it's not free to yeah, play that's the thing that still gets me it's like they can talk about all the content they want in the game that's there available and that's why they believe it's worth 40 but there's so many free to play games right now that have had so long to build up the content that if somebody right now we'll say a newer generation's coming up. They just got a PS five first time. This is it. They're in, they, they don't even have to pay to 
do PlayStation Plus to do something like a Fortnite. And there's a ton of content there. Uh, there the Apex Legends, same thing. You can look around at a lot of these live service games and they've just they've stacked content for years now that it's like you got to show up with something really compelling. And I, maybe that's the issue with Concord. It kind of blends in. It kind of does. So that's whether it's because it looks like Guardian of the Galaxy or it feels like an Overwatch. It's it hasn't set itself apart enough, I feel like. So hopefully the gameplay does that and I'll come away with good impressions of it. But if not, I got to tell you, I have, I will immediately just kind of run it over and leave. So <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will give it a fair shot. I will tell you that at least at the very least. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm so curious as to how this game is going to do, especially because if it does, let's say, not work out like we know the game doesn't debut very well, bad reviews, poor player sentiment, not, you know, uh, showing up on sales charts like we know the game's in a bad spot. How long does it take, if ever, where they go for that live service U-turn? Oh, the game is free. Yes. Uh, oh, and here's how we're gonna, yeah, and here's how we're going to monitor. Well, either that or it, they they make it truly free to play because free to play games on PSN don't need plus. Sure. So it's like what path do they take if the game does fall flat on its face? What's the commitment level there to make this thing work? You know, the I guess one example we have is like Destruction All-Stars, which mm-hmm. you know, we saw a pretty big U-turn, but at the same time that didn't save the game, so that one blended in too, though. <laughs> that was kind of an issue. I would actually. You don't think it, so? Did it though? Yeah, I, I feel like Destruction All Stars stuck out to a degree. You know, having mm. that weird car combat, but also on foot action. That was definitely. Yeah, a maybe you're right. That maybe maybe it's just the fact that it wasn't. It it wasn't car combat enough. It didn't have the rocket launcher strapped to my to my my little sedan <laughs> driving around. Maybe that's what it was. It, it, like people probably looked at that and thought twisted metal and then it came out and it wasn't twisted metal <laughs> yeah i was i don't know i mean i i guess i wouldn't have a good take on that game either because it's that you know what it also... was that game reminded me of like if ubisoft made it a game <laughs> like that that's what it, that's what it felt like it felt, maybe that's what i mean when i say it blended in like the art style the feel of it it felt like ubisoft made it you know that, that that's not great when we we always use Ubisoft as this like comparison of like, oh, it feels like a Ubisoft title. Like that's not that's not flattering at all. What I does that say about, about U- fair games though? What does that say about you? Ubi- by ex- well, Ubisoft people. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm well that that tra- that tracks that <laughs> we can connect the dots on that one, but it's I don't know if it sounds flattering to say like, oh, this, this is kind of like a Ubisoft title. And we oh, all know what that means. Mean, like tried to make some of the games kind of like what like hip to the younger generation and that's kind of what it felt like <laughs> destruction all stars was trying to do you had the guy like dancing with like the the techno head on that would change like expressions yeah. like electronically and it's like i feel like i'm too old to play this now but i'll give it a shot so the hero uh the hero car combat game yeah all right let's uh, let's talk about something more hip right what do the kids like mm-hmm. nowadays they like uh, very attractive women. Stellar Blade reaches 1 million sales. And a PC version is being considered. This was during a recent IPO press briefing. Shift Up CFO uh, confirmed that the total sales are estimated to be over a million. They're still considering DLC and a sequel for the game. And also a PC version uh, is in this weird spot where they didn't want to comment on it directly. They said they're considering it. Uh, but they can't comment on it directly due to a contractual obligation, sure. which basically is them saying like, well, our current agreement with Sony is that the game is going to be on PlayStation five for the time being. Um, but it seems like the game is a success so far. The way I'm reading this is primarily shift up. I mean, the, the context being, this is an, an IPO briefing. Like they want to take the company public. They want to, yep. you know, gr- grow the company and, and get bigger. And so, it seems pretty clear to me that the original deal they took with Sony was not a proper PS studios title. You know, Sony, Sony doesn't own the IP. They didn't even want to humor the kind of agreement that like, you know, rise of the Ronin got, which that's a third party PS studios title. Like Sony doesn't own that IP either, but um, it didn't get the branding. Cause I would assume stellar blade is allowed to go elsewhere once, you know, a certain amount of time goes by and they'll, they'll likely want to ship a sequel on, on multiple 
platforms and things like that. But it seems like the game initially did pretty well. Yeah. I mean, I look at this as for them. They probably like I would say this is a success for them for new IP trying to break onto the scene as because originally they did like these cell phone games sort of that didn't really scream high quality necessarily mm-hmm. in the sense that they were trying to make this quote unquote triple a game like a seller blade so i think at times i feel like people look at sales numbers and they go it only sold a million copies but for stuff for them they're probably like wow this sold a million copies that's awesome because it's just on the ps5 so it's not like it's on everything right now and they, so there is a there is a limit to the amount of people that could sell it to and then you also take into account that there are a lot of people who buy the ps5 as their default system at this point it's mm-hmm. their call of duty box it's their fifa box is you know that kind of thing i feel like all things considered and they were in the media a lot which celebrated they just were and it was a so it's just weird like somehow stellar blade was at this the middle of this battleground between people online and for them maybe they were really happy with it because it brought a lot of attention to it and they sold a million copies seemingly quick like it the game's not like super old or anything obviously it came out recently yeah um, so i feel like in their mind this is a jumping off point to where they can then they talked about even like oh maybe we'll do a sequel for this we're gonna have new content coming to the game they seem like ready to roll and this could be a game that just over time just keeps selling like we could in a couple of years we could go oh yeah seller blade hit six million copies sold so this could be one that just is a slow burner basically in terms of sales especially if it goes to pc it'll do well there i'm sure let's be real the modding community will have a field day with that game it could go to (laughs) xbox someday this could be a game that just eventually shows up on nintendo's next system there's a lot of avenues for it based on i'm sure a partnership agreement they have with sony that is not like uh completely there just forever like i'm sure it will go elsewhere at some point but for sony this definitely filled in a gap for them this year to have a stellar blade there earlier in the year so that was kind of i feel like that was their thought process we'll do a limited time like a like a timed exclusivity deal and that way it'll kind of get us to this next game or this next milestone or when we're ready to really start showing stuff hopefully later this year (laughs) yeah i'm 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 curious as to how locked down the game is because i Mm -hmm. would i would probably safely assume stellar blades not going to other consoles but the sequel Mm -hmm. Now that they're going public, I would presume they're going to want to ship that everywhere because this game originally was announced for uh, multi-platform when it, it was. was when it was titled Project Eve. And that's one of the few examples as a misnomer uh, where Sony swooped in, as they say, and locked the game down. But typically they don't actually do that. They almost always do uh, third party agreements before, you know, named platforms are put out there. So this is kind of a rare example where Sony Sony has done that. But I would imagine it was only this game in particular. Now they're probably going to want to expand and capitalize on what would be another console game for them. Because like you said, this was their their first console game. So it seems like it did well for them. I'm just wondering if their background in phones, if they would think about this game going, you know, like the iPhone is getting all these AAA games now. I almost wonder if Apple would make a deal because Apple seemingly is paying for some of the development of these titles. I almost wonder if you would see a Stellar Blade on. I do wonder how iPhone just fits in like with Sony, how they view the iPhone for some of this stuff. Like, is that part of the console exclusivity thing or is that just sort of its own thing so they could get it to iPhone? I don't know how well the game would play on an iPhone. It's just, it's interesting that we're seeing phones start to run up against consoles with some of these games like Resident Evil 4 or Assassin's Creed now showing up. They're Death Stranding. Their Decima's there, so. It's funny you mention that because I didn't, we, I forget where we, heard about this i recall seeing a headline about this i didn't look into it but aren't those games selling terribly on iphone they are that's why apple yeah. seemingly is uh is the one they have to step in and foot the bill for them because it, it just doesn't pencil out for the the studios no so for a lot of them they're like oh well apple's gonna basically pay for it why not let's just board it and see yeah. what happens so in their mind it's free money but it, it basically comes down to how long does apple want to keep doing this or does it eventually catch on it's just this is like early days for these kind of games on an iPhone because while the look, the, the M processors are very impressive, but it still has issues with thermal capacity, obviously, because the thing gets super hot and uh, just battery power in general. Like we, we do need some sort of just a, overall technology wise, a breakthrough for battery technology for a lot of this stuff to work out. So call me crazy, but I just, th- there is nothing shocking to me at all about those games selling poorly on iPhone. 
I just I never look at my phone and go, you know what? I I want to play Assassin's Creed on this. You don't. You want to play something that's made for the smartphone. You right. want to play something that has proper swipe gestures and you can hold vertically and I'm I'm just you're not going to describe Pokemon Go, okay? Just say. No, I'm describing mobile games. I'm <laughs> I I I've I've always been like just entirely unconvinced of this like pipe dream of like, oh, let's get all these console PC quality games on the go or on the go. I use air quotes there because it's like build games for the the tailor made for the the screen that you're making them for. It's a mm-hmm. different marketplace. I just think it's also the price point. Yeah, like, the, 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 you know, the, the expectation of that storefront. Yeah. You, I'm sorry, the, to, the cell phone market has been absolutely obliterated. It's just it's free to play stuff. And that's to me, that's it. You're not going to charge for these things anymore. It's free to play. And then they're willing to spend four hundred dollars on microtransactions in a month. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> so it's strange. not it's not 2010 anymore. Nobody's dropping ninety nine cents for like a beer app. Like it's just not. It's really it is really funny, though, isn't it? Because someone would say, I don't. I can't buy that fifty dollars game on my phone, but then they'll spend two hundred dollars on microtransactions on a free game in a month. Yeah, they're they're different marketplaces. Like it's just, it's so I'm I'm unconvinced. The psychology yeah. of it is At least so, right so strange. <laughs> All right, well let's let's move on to a game that is selling really well right now, thanks to a PC release, and that is Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, recently, we had some data come in from Matt Piscatella of Circana, which tracks video game sales data in the United States. And thanks to the PC release, Tsushima, uh, ranked by dollar sales, which is a big caveat, just beat uh, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, which was a new release, although that game does not include digital sales. So basically, you're propping up the Steam, Tsushima, and PS5 version against physical only Paper Mario. But it was the number one uh, ranked by dollar sales uh, best selling game in the United States which I feel like was maybe a little surprising to some, but the month was not super crazy. You know, it's, we're getting like, oh, this is right before we're going into summer. Game sales mm-hmm. kind of slowed down around this area. So I don't know. Tsushima is a pretty high profile PlayStation Studios game. So seeing it ship on PC, I think was a, a pretty big deal. It's a good port too. Like I, I picked it up on PC and uh, it takes advantage of ultra wide monitor support it runs incredibly well like they did a great job on that port that was nix's to the port it worked out incredibly well in terms of performance stability the controls all lined up you can just use your dual sense controller and it's basically like okay i'm playing this technically it's like playing it on a ps5 pro already i guess um but it uh it was a good experience and the thing though that's so interesting is it jumped from number 71 in circana to number yeah. one it jumped 70 spots because of a Steam release of a game that's several years old right now. Yep. That is very interesting for Sony's perspective. Now, I think Ghost Tsushima uh, is... I mean, we have kind of games like that on P- I mean, PC has so many games. I'm sure there's some you could point to. High-profile games like that, though? Not... Maybe not as many. So it, it did kind of, I think, fill a nice spot on Steam for people with like high end PCs who want a game that looks like that. Right. And the gameplay, of course, feeding into the samurai ninja style. But I I almost wonder if Sony looks at this and goes, OK, those are sales that we got years later without a big marketing push. What happens if this was their day one to go alongside that marketing push would this have sold even better because that feels like that did really well going from 71 to to one that's not like a little bit of revenue that came in to make that happen that was that's a fair amount yeah i think it's um i don't know i mean the the thing is we just had their statements on this recently from the the business segment Mm -hmm. briefing so we, we still know for the time being there's going to be that that sort of year two year delay for high profile single player games to me this one just reads as just a, a more high profile single player title because we've already seen a handful of those pc releases where some of them just didn't really do right a whole a whole lot of anything but tsushima is a bit unique in that you know it was a new ip it's it's a standalone like new thing people can walk into like having like the uncharted legacy of thieves collection on pc you might think is a big deal but like oh people are going to be starting with four and <laughs> lost legacy it's like you know that so it's like that game's not going to do all that well um even rift apart like there's all the ratchets that you're not getting on pc just yet so 
I don't know. I, I feel like Tsushima just was came in at a very opportune time. It's a solid PC port, like you said. But um, I mean, it's this is why they're doing PC games. <laughs> it ran well in the Steam Deck too. Like, fairly yeah. Well. Well, this, this is a good release for them. I just, uh, I, I, I would be, I'd be curious to see what Sony's reaction, like some of the the top brass there, what their thought was seeing that. Like, oh wow, that's maybe even better than we thought it would do. Huh. Like just thinking about like, so like the next ghost Tsushima, whether it's ghost Tsushima two or ghost of somewhere else. And like, they'd go that route with a new character. If instead of it taking multiple years for it to make the jump to PC, maybe that's one that takes 12 months and it shows up on PC pretty quickly. It's like, okay, cool. Now we're going to get it over to steam kind of as soon as possible within reason. Like we're not going to do it tomorrow, like from release, but We'll see you in a year and we'll put it out there. I just, mm-hmm. I, I kind of think that's going to shorten the window. Like as in they're like, oh, okay. Ghost Tsushima 2 is coming out in the next year, like two years or something. Let's get that PC port started now and make sure it's really good. So it can come out a year after the console version. You know what else I wonder though? Along with the Circana report, Ryan, we found out that the Xbox was down in terms of, Ooh. I mean, they're all technically from the year prior. Like they're all down double digits. Yep. But I th- that does have to do with just the fact that we are one. I think we're on the other side of the bell curve, as they have kind of said, Hey, we've sort of peaked kind of for the generation. We're <clears throat> getting on the other side of the bell curve, but also still coming off of the, how the pandemic had completely blown up just sales in general is way higher. And we are still kind of treading off of that a bit, but the PS five is tracking ahead of the PS four in, in, in the, the U S yeah. Yes. Uh, Xbox is tracking behind the Xbox one and the Xbox 360. The fact that I hear it's tracking behind the Xbox one this far in this generation, it just makes me think right now that Sony has such control over that, that high, that high end market for consoles that they have become the default system. And I just, I wonder if they look and go, would this really hurt us if we put this triple a narrative driven experience, single player game? Would it hurt us if we released it on PC alongside the PS5 version day one? Because what are people going to do? Like, are they going to buy the Xbox? Because it doesn't seem like people are as interested right now in that console as opposed to the, the default FIFA box or Call of Duty box with the, the PlayStation. So yeah. I, I almost wonder if they get to that. Sony's been overconfident before in the past. Some of these numbers that come out, I mean, I kind of, I almost wonder if they're, they're going to start treading into that area of overconfidence again, because it does kind of feel like they're just starting now, especially to run away with the generation in terms of console soul. I know there's always the argument of engagement numbers, revenue, profit, whatever, but consoles specifically numbers sold. It, it kind of feels like Sony is just in a different sector right now. S- some would argue that they've, already decided doing that four years ago before the generation was even really determined. You know, they were one of the first publishers to say $70 games. You know, they were one of the first publishers to price their controllers at like 70, 75 for different colors. And the dual sense edge being 200, although the elites obviously up there too, but I don't know. There's there's just a number of things we can sort of point to and say like the, the company was already getting, I think pretty confident with, the the platform cycle they were exiting you know what i find fascinating though is that you know like the 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 argument for xbox and and its market position nowadays a lot of it always falls to like the number one argument i see a lot of well i wouldn't call it number one but i see it a lot which is you know when when microsoft started shipping their games day and date on pc like that was the problem or something or that was a you know a big detrimental problem to 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 xbox Mm -hmm. which you know, I, I don't really agree with that. I mean, I, I'm sure some people checked out, right? Because then it's like, oh, I can get the game on PC or whatever the case is. But like, that's, that's I think, ignoring many problems that Microsoft has had for the past 15 years now, right? Yeah. Like it's, so I don't know. I, I, in the case of like PlayStation, I, I think it's, this is why I think at a certain point, they'll probably do day and date PC releases. I don't know when. It sounds like now it's maybe further out than we were thinking, but right. they're different audiences. I mean, if as long as the, you've got a console that is just still a very compelling box with a lot of great software, like you're always going to be speaking to a, a console buyer. I always think have your cake and eat it too. There's just PC players that are not going to run out and buy a PS5. I think you can still sell hardware to them though, right? If we get to a position where 
they have a handheld. The thing I've noticed with like PC gamers is if there is some other advantage outside of just like, like form factor, I think is a big one because we see these handheld gaming PCs selling all the time. Yes, they can link to your Steam account. Clearly, that's a big thing because you get that library there right away. But I, I do think it is that idea of there is some convenience aspect to it because people will still buy the Switch even if they have a $4,000 PC. You see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of it. It's like, well, if I'm going to sit down here, I'll just I'll play it on my nice PC if the option's available. But if you're away from your PC, whether it's on a trip or even just in like the living room or something, you're like, what, what can I play? That I mean, that might be the route for Sony to to tap into that is to have a handheld. That's why I think now things are kind of like the like the pendulum swinging. I think back to portable gaming being like a big focus for these companies again. Like it, it was kind of there for a bit, but we weren't quite to the level we are now, where it's like okay, these console games just work on portable systems now. Um, we were still getting that. I mean, the Vita was close, but we still got that terrible version of Call of Duty on there. <laughs> now. You can just play Warzone on these things. Like there's so many of them now and they all do a fair enough job. I feel like Sony, if they did day and date PC, I would, I'd like to think they do cross by, but who knows? Maybe they go, nope, yeah. you gotta buy. They might get some PC people to buy the game twice. It might happen like right away. So they can play it on their portable as long as there's pro cross progression, which would also probably include you signing into your PlayStation account that, People seem very excited about <laughs> so yeah I, that's exactly I think, that. an, I think there's an avenue here for sony though if they play it that way to where they could release games pc playstation and you're right there are people who just don't want to play on pc and there are people who just don't want to play on a playstation like they just they're locked in they're fine there are so many people i talked to back in the day at the this is even during like the ps3 360 era Ryan, where like the PCs were, were pretty good then. They gotten better with Windows and drivers, and it wasn't as bad as you got to find every single one. Windows will kind of find a lot of them for you. Didn't care. I just I just want to play my PS3 and my 360. I just don't I don't I don't care if it's 60 frames there. I'll take sketchy 30 frames here just because I can turn it on and it'll work. That was it. Yep. Yeah, I just I just find speak speak to that buyer. You know, you're if, to convince a PC player to run out and buy a PlayStation. If they're just not going to contribute to the, uh, the kind of numbers that Sony's looking for the, the bottom line of like buying multiple games per console, buying accessories, you know, subscribing to PS plus mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I find they'll, they'll get there eventually, but as you mentioned, I'm, I'm in complete agreement where I, I don't, I don't see them ever like really offering cross buy. Um, because they still would like to loop you into their ecosystem. Like if they ever do theoretically have a, a, a portable like that, as a value prop to the, to their ecosystem directly and contributing to PSN spend, you know, in their ecosystem. So if they can find an Avenue to convince some buyers, then that's probably one path they'll explore. Do you think the aha moment for any one of these companies, and I could even include Nintendo in this, you think the aha moment is when they get the PC gamer to sign up for a subscription service in their ecosystem for something. So it feels like they're all trying to get like Microsoft is really trying to figure this out with PC game pass. Yeah. And uh, I feel like N Nintendo, maybe they could come up with something where they do NSO with all these. I know they're just emulators and ROMs, but the idea of it kind of coming together in an easy to use app between your phone, your PC and your switch, that kind of thing. Um, and that charges money you know, per month or year or whatever. And then Sony, maybe they come up with a launcher that kind of feels like everyone's trying to tap into that market. They've just been unsuccessful to get the PC gamer to give them like recurring revenue through a subscription service, give them money <laughs> basically. Yes. Because look, console owners still, they got to pay to play online, you know, and it's, 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 it's archaic technically. Like we've seen I think Microsoft's uh, executive, uh, Tim, maybe it was Tim Stewart. They, they were like, yeah, it's archaic to have to pay for online. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's, but it's it's such an easy revenue stream for these companies. They just they stick with it. Yeah, th that's why they'll never get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, they'll, I, I mean, I like to see people say they should get rid of the paywall. Like, yeah, I, I'd love for that to happen when it never will ever. <laughs> Someone would have to like make the move in a competitive way. Like Microsoft would have to get to the point where like you know what we're going to try to make this appealing by just getting rid of the online requirement for pay. <laughs> Which the damn thing is, we are recording this mere hours after they finally came out and 
did what we were all expecting, which was reshuffle around Game Pass tiers and yep. also increase the price and now offer a tier without day one games, which means even Microsoft is still sitting here admitting like we need to get more money out of this. We need to try and attract more people outside of Xbox because Game Pass has saturated on console for a long time. So just as you mentioned, like that's where everybody is right now is we've we're just extracting more money out of the same people. How do we get into these other markets? And I don't, I don't think cloud streaming's gone like everyone's. No. Well, I say everyone. I say these companies have hoped. Sony, Microsoft. I feel like everyone's kind of like okay, cloud streaming. And then it's just been really slow out of the gate so far. <laughs> just has not materialized. I think in the, I think they were really thinking this thing would accelerate. Like it is get yeah, moving. Everyone will be picking up uh, fire sticks now or just on their PC or phones. And it hasn't at least not yet. I think that barrier is still the controller. You still need to buy a controller to do cloud streaming. That's just kind of the way it is for a lot of these, a lot of people. If they want to play a game legitimately rather than just try to, fiddle around with your touchscreen because the touchscreen UI is terrible for most of these, <laughs> these services. So hell back in 2014, you could have bought a dual shock three and a specific set of Sony Bravia and Samsung televisions and used PlayStation now without a console. Mm. They've been trying. That was 10 more than 10 years ago. Well, about 10 years ago. And here we are still no different. So Gonna take them a while to unlock that audience. If it never does, what if it never does? But that I feel like that would be almost devastating if cloud gaming never <laughs> went beyond this point. Like if we if we are right now at the peak of cloud gaming, like in terms of acceptance, and I, it just start to kind of fade away now. Wouldn't that be crazy? That would I feel like that'd be a lot of money wasted for I mean everyone. <laughs> I think we're gonna have consoles for a long time. I think they'll be relevant too. Too. Yeah, for a long time. The fact that cloud gaming has not going crazy and like really found its way into the mainstream like that. I kind of feel like console gaming is going to be around for a longer than most of us were thinking. Yeah. All right, John, let's move on to uh, Sony returning to TGS. They're coming back to the Tokyo game show, which they have not been back to as an exhibitor proper since 2019. TGS of course runs from, well, this year it would be September 26th to the 29th, but it's always in September. Uh, and they're also going to China Joy as well, which that runs from the 26th to the 29th in July. So this month, that's coming up very soon, which at least for like China Joy, we can mention they've, I think they've gone to that every year so far because they have the China Hero Project. So we'll probably get more info for Lost Soul Aside, Convalaria, uh, The God Slayer, some of those games that we might, we're still waiting for, like confirmed release dates or new trailers. But in terms of Sony, uh, Sony going back to TGS, this is noteworthy, if only because I mean, they used to do press conferences at TGS. This doesn't mean they're doing a press conference, but what it does mean is they're, they're going to have like floor space. They're going to have, you know, playable demos. And even though they do have holiday games coming out that in theory, like that's what, what they could have, right? So like they'll bring Astro Bot or Until Dawn um, or Concord, but really it's, a, well, Concord would be out by then, but really the the more... I think noteworthy thing is just knowing that around September is when we're expecting a PS5 Pro reveal um, and still potentially perhaps a, either the same showcase or a different showcase with game debuts as well. Uh, but considering this is like late September, you would assume that they might have a little bit more to show with a show they have not been to in, you know, going on five years. Since Jim Ryan. Yeah, Jim Ryan. Yeah. Interesting. Jim Ryan's gone. Now they're back to TGS. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that, I don't, I, I'm curious if that would be like a direct Jim Ryan thing, but he didn't want to fly over there. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot of travel, a lot of travel involved. <laughs> no. I, uh, it, it, the timing was funny. People were pointing that online. I'm like, Oh yeah, I guess, I guess that's kind of true. That's, that's, that's just funny. What the, uh, the funny but, point with that is I've seen so many people say now that Jim Ryan's gone and then they say X, Y, and Z and I'm, and uh, every time yep. I 90% of the time, oh, Hey, we had that or that's been going on or that happened under Jim Ryan's watch. Some people don't know what they're talking about, John. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it's all Jim Ryan. Yeah. He, the evil man that the, the evil man that actually did a few things that I enjoyed. I, uh, I, I'm curious about the timing for this because well, what I think TGS is just in a better place for Sony in terms of their, the calendar compared to, 
Gamescom, I feel like just didn't make any sense for Sony at all. Like it's at the that's at the end of August. So most likely that's coming up to when they were going to do a PS5 Pro reveal, which you're right, probably has gamer reveals next to it. I, I kind of think you unveil games, you unveil a PS5 Pro and it all works together. One sells the other kind of thing. So I'm wondering, let's say the OK, so the PS5 Pro, the belief is it's coming out this holiday. They announce it August, September, somewhere in there. And then it comes out a couple months later. So end of October, November. Expected September for release in November. If it's if it's like PS4 Pro. But again, right. I'm, I'm not convinced that this showcase will have new game announcements. But the only thing we have to go on is PS4 Pro. Because that showcase did not. That was a very formal, like, here's the console. And here's patches for games you already know about. It wasn't new game announcements, but like we're in a weird spot where we're, we're due for some. So right. I'm, I'm still not sure if, if it's a matter of like September, here's PS five pro here's patches for like Spider-Man two and Ragnarok and, and things like that. Right. Um, and then we don't get that, that proper show until let's say May, 2025. Mm -hmm. um, or if they do new game announcements, but either way, you know, we're expecting something in September so right. we might have a little something extra on the show floor at TGS. Well, I, I'm I'm expecting something like uh, we'll say Death Stranding two in attendance at Tokyo Game Show. I, I feel like that makes sense for them to have that Which, there. Yeah, that would track. And, and th I think that would also be a good game to show up on the PS5 Pro because it it already looks good on the PS5, and we've seen the trailer for it. That also looks good. So you could put it there. I I, I honestly it. To me, it makes sense to have some. You could have something like the next, like Ghost of Tsushima too. <laughs> you could have that there. Uh, I think that would make sense at, at TGS. But also, I can't count out the idea that Sony might just have a lot of third-party deals in place, and that's what they're going to be showing off at TGS. And they have a big, you know, their their floor space there to have demos and and different things showing up there for marketing, just to show off those kind of games. I still though you. Yeah, it was 2019, right? It was the last time they had like sh a show floor. Yeah, it feel like they're gonna make they're gonna take a swing at it. It's not gonna be it's not free. <laughs> it's gonna cost money to do this. So you feel like in that sense that they have something to show off that would also benefit their first party. Maybe it is that PS5 Pro. Maybe that PS5 Pro is either announced ahead of it because they would have their state of play for TGS. Like they usually do that, right before. State of play, uh, state of play yeah, before they, TGS, just to show off third parties yeah. and maybe a first party in there or something. Yeah, I think th there's a lot of ways that th this can go. We because we look like just listed off like a number of scenarios. I'm I'm sure something is going to play out, but uh, yeah, to see them secure floor space, uh, floor space, excuse me, is is a fascinating thing because it is unfathomably expensive to like <laughs> exhibit at these shows. That's why Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft for that matter, stop doing a lot of them. So to see it's, them re return is, you know, it's, it's a bit of an eyebrow raise like, Oh, so what are you, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing that for now? Isn't it funny? This is like news now back in the day. It's like, yeah, of course they're, of course they're a TGS. What are you talking <laughs> about? Of course they're at E3. Now it's like, Oh my gosh, they're going to TGS after five years of not being there. This is incredible. I, I do. I feel like something's there of note. And I, I, I would lean towards the PS5 Pro, but uh, I, I'm going to be really curious to see how they market and show this thing off, whether it is with current games to know about with patches or they got something up their sleeve that would be like, oh, OK, this this looks pretty impressive on the PS5 Pro. That's they got to have that wow factor, I feel like, to go along with it for they're going to tell people it's 8K and. Oh, don't do I, that. I don't I don't know anyone with an AK set still. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, it'll be such an eye roll if they even so much as humor the idea of AK games with PSSR. It's <laughs> it's got to be it's it's got to be like, you know, just higher frame rate modes or just a more consistent near native 4K image quality with high frame rates or I feel like they want to sell their AK TVs, though. So they're like, OK, what do we got? What's what's the big brand? PlayStation. All right, this thing does 8K. Pair it with the new Bravi or something. You would hope Sony's smart enough to realize that's just like stupid. I feel like they have to see. I mean, most of these TV manufacturers probably see the sales for 8K. I just don't. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, finally, I got that 8K set. I've been waiting so long for. It. Just don't. 
Most people are like, oh, I want the OLED display that's 4K. Like they don't care. I feel like resolution's kind of going on the the back burner a bit for it things has, that have just yeah. made the picture quality better. Whether it's, it's like uh, mini LED, micro LED, mini LED, or um. OLED, display yeah. technology is like the big yeah. thing. That's the discussion is, you know, should I get an OLED or a QLED or am I still fine with the basic LCD? Cause the price is still pretty good. So it's fascinating. Like the OLEDs that people, the, these companies have figured out how to make the screen a speaker and stuff. It's, it's incredible stuff that's happening right now in, in like mm-hmm. the tech. And it has nothing to do with resolution. We used to talk about resolution all the time back in the day. Now that's like the last thing I think about when I look at a TV, cause I just assume it's 4k. I don't even think about it being a K. I was like, what else can it do other than resolution? Because I, it should be 4K. And that's, and that's the thing with games, right? It's like, it's, it's still like, even in the, the PC space where you build a really capable machine, like it's, st- it's still not something we are reliably playing every single game that comes out at 4K 60. I play at 1440p with this, uh, the ultra wide monitor. And that's been perfectly fine for me. Like yeah. I had, it's a higher, so it's like 144 Hertz, which is fine. But yeah, I, I've been fine with 1440p like a couple feet from the monitor. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm curious though. So we'll you know that's only um, two months away. Shouldn't be I know there's I know there's somebody's in the comments talking about their big theater setup. That makes sense for AK, I understand. Like if you have a hundred and thirty <laughs> inch TV in the basement or like projector, I get it. But for the vast majority of people who are have like a 65 inch TV and they're sitting eight to ten feet from it or something, it's just not it just doesn't make sense for the mainstream right now. Listen, if I've got, if I'm paying for an 8K television, I'm, my eyes are going to be like fucking two inches away from that screen because right. I want to <laughs> I want to see that extra detail. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. How about this, John? Sony is winding down a portion of their business for consumer Blu-rays, like recordable, rewritable Blu-rays. That's not what I saw. I saw the headlines. Yeah. They said. Sony is out of blue. No, <laughs> yeah, depending on depending <laughs> on where you about read that this. briefly at too many games that popped up and we were joking about it. Depending on where you read this, like some places definitely go for the misleading headline or they phrase it a certain way, which I mean, really a lot of headlines were, were accurate, but like it's also like user error. Like somebody just reads it a certain way and Telephone you know that, that internet, that's yeah. where it can go. So this was initially reported by the Japanese publication Mayanichi. Sony is about to like not renew contracts or like, you know, not like 250 staff basically are are being let go at the Sony Sendai Technology Center. And that's the facility that produces writable discs. Uh, So this this would be consumer blank discs that you can write your own content to. And that's the the big caveat is that this is like a portion of the business that they're they're winding down and and uh, exiting. But otherwise, this has no influence or a direct impact on like standard like media that's sold with printed content on there. So your CD, DVD, Blu-ray, anything that's normally printed on there, your Blu-ray games, that's not what this is about. So kind of an open and shut case. I think it's, to me, this speaks more about just how little people are copying content to discs themselves, right? Yeah, like, the, does this really surprise surprise you that like somebody would be not what, like not offering this anymore? I just I don't really know many people who burn Blu-rays like at all. Back like, yeah. with the DVD, DVD when that came out, and you could I mean CD burning was it back in the day? You remember that when some people would buy the Hewlett Packard that had two CD drives? That way you didn't have to take the audio disc out and put the blank disc into. Uh, back up your 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 cd your music cd <laughs> <laughs> the uh and that that was that was awesome back then and then people would make their own mix cds and whatever that's fine but dvd was still big dvd burning um but then after that i just feel like blu-ray did not catch on in terms of burning them and maybe yeah. that's because it, it did take longer i mean some of these blu-rays were 25 to 50 gigabytes it would take a while to burn those things even with like a decently fast blu-ray drive the most i've really used a blu-ray drive for and it's so funny is ripping ps3 games with my i have a desktop that has a compatible blu-ray drive for ripping ps3 games for my yeah. my copies here i just use that i i, I have a, a big hard drive or a big ssd in there and I've just been going through for the past, like, actually several months now, just occasionally ripping some of my Blu-ray games to it uh, for PS3. And that's kind of, that's all I really used a Blu-ray drive in a <laughs> in a desktop for at this point. I didn't even watch movies on it because we just 
most people just stream the stuff. I, I'm curious, whoever's what, whoever's watching right now, listening, look at your desktop PC. And is, is there a disk drive in it? Because I feel like 80% of people right now are like, no, of course not. not one well, in there. so even in that case, John, you're, you're still not writing content to the disk. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, I, I don't know. I don't know anybody that's ever written content to a Blu-ray because you're right. Like it's CDs. This was huge DVD. Mm -hmm. It was even still around uh, DVD is even as far as I know, is still fairly, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say popular, but like even DVD people do that. So I don't know. I, I think it just speaks more volumes of how often people are writing content to, to Blu-rays, but I don't know. I guess this news still includes like all, all other formats, but I mean, really, I think just in general, it's probably down. Like I, yeah. nowadays you can take a USB stick and you can just write the disc image to that. And most things have a USB port on it, whether it's C or type a, and you can, you can boot an entire OS off of it. And that's fine. Whereas back in the day, you would get so many CDs for a game or you get your OS on a couple of CDs and that's how it would work. So, I, I mean, I like that aspect because we're to the point now where our USB sticks are so fast that it's just, you just read, write, you know, you reflash them over and over again to whatever you need. And it, it takes a minute or two to get that done. Whereas you would have CDs on spindles everywhere. And it was, it was so much junk. You'd, you'd mess up. First off, you'd mess up at least one burn <laughs> each time you went out to do it. So you'd end up with a coaster, yeah. which I don't know if anyone else had this. There were a couple of times where I would mess them up and I had like a coaster of like windows vista on my desk it was just a, a, a cd or a dvd that i messed up and i just i had it on a coaster for all summer one time and it's just vista x86 i remember that uh, and i just left that written on there and i crossed off the vista so you knew it was a messed up burn i was gonna say you just put the use the the marker on there and have to cross it out or something because you knew it was no good at that point yeah. it was okay it was it was a pain in the ass writing to desks I replaced it with mag. That that, that was my other poster. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. hey, PS3 emulation. We can get mag back online. I I'm surprised yeah, mag bad. has not been properly restored. But I I would assume there's a community out there working towards it. You'd think. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> how about uh? Let's talk about some PlayStation Productions news. All right, some good old TV watching. The Horizon TV show. Turns out this uh, show might not be going forward based on a recent wider expose on the uh, Hollywood showrunner Steve Blackman, who I guess with anonymous sources speaking to, um, this, was, uh, where was, this was on the Rolling Stones, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, Blackman is manipulative, very toxic, hard to work with. Um, his response is that the claims are unfounded. But uh, the point is, he was working on the Horizon Netflix series and also the original series Orbital. And now we're hearing that those are no longer moving forward because of that. Uh, I don't know about you, but I would safely assume that if this showrunner is the problem, then they're just going to get another one or they're going to shop this around or still go, mm -hmm. go forward with it. I to think see, somebody will do it. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. see horizon not go forward. I, I like, it doesn't stop here. <laughs> no, that seems like no. that seems like the intellectual property that Sony is the most interested in right now. Without a to doubt. Me anyway, when I look at them, yeah, it's, it's horizon. Oh. They're like, wait, this, this is it right here. We can, we can really take this to the next level with a Netflix series, but maybe it doesn't end up on that. Maybe now it's like, they're going to shop it around and Amazon will swoop in and be like, all right, let's, let's, let's get a new director in here. We'll get this all set up and we'll put it on Amazon prime or I don't know. There's so many now are vying for these shows, these IPs that it's, it's almost too easy for these different companies to be like, yeah, go ahead and fund it. We'll figure it out. So I think this will pop back up very quickly if not with netflix with someone else so sony will they'll they'll get this thing done i think yeah I, I'm, I'm curious about the deal itself as in does it still have to stay at home with netflix and they'll just get right. somebody else or because right now that with amazon that's where god of war is and that's still going on so i don't it's know so if they, these things get that spread out so much because these these streaming yeah. services just oh, man. Well, you know, for like, I mean, for the IP holder, it's pretty advantageous at least because they can take their, you know, their names and just shop them around. Like who's got sure. the best deal, you know? So I don't know if this is something where they have to take it to somebody else, but I think we're still going to get this. 
it just seems like this is a little snag in the um in the timeline here. And it'll just delay it, unfortunately. I, I mean, I would have been curious to see how it would have worked out, like what kind of style I guess they would have gone with it for. Uh, I don't know. It's I, I also feel like Horizon. You like Horizon quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I my thing is I want it to be a movie. I think it'd be better as a movie. OK, OK, yeah, I, well, I can I, see that. I can see that. Like throw I, a throw a huge hundred fifty million dollar budget at it. Go crazy with CGI and just make it. look. But you know what I mean? Like make mm-hmm. this thing lean into exactly what Horizon is about. Like Give it this chaotic action. And, you know, you, I don't not to say like TV shows are compromised with like CGI and things like that. I know like it, it, nowadays it's in a much better shape, but uh, I think it's just better served as a movie. Okay. Okay. My only concern with horizon is that Sony tries to do do too much too fast with it in like a short, short span of time. And you get some horizon fatigue, I guess you could say. That's my only concern is that they almost run into the ground or something, but I just, people just do not seem to like Aloy very much (laughs) online. I (laughs) I see it all the time. I just don't, I just don't, I just don't buy it. I, f- I feel like this is just a core vocal audience. We know the games have sold very well. It just don't like Aloy. <laughs> hey, which, is so, which is so rude. What do you mean you don't like it? She has so much development. Also, are we just going to ignore how this, this woman grew up? In a very, very weird timeline. Like, I mean, yeah, nah, no, it's shit, completely normal. Completely normal. Yeah, no, no shit. You're going to be like weird and, and I guess not have a socially awkward. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like she has development. I don't know. Let's not open up this rant. I, <laughs> I, I like Horizon, although I can I do sympathize with people that are like, oh, like, you know, there's just like a lot of it going on. If you don't like Horizon, then obviously there's nothing here for you. Well, I, we should all see how this third game's going to, because it's going to be a, I mean, for what they've said, like a trilogy. So we're, we're expecting this third game. We'll see how it turns out. And then I'm also curious if, be, because people have like talked about Aloy so much and stuff when it comes to that, if, uh, if maybe they play around with the timeline, they jump ahead, jump before the, like there's a lot of places they can go with the, the franchise when they finish up this trilogy. So th- there's a lot to explore, I think, with that based on the the history and stuff that was described in the games. This is true. But after the third game, I would like them to, I'd be, I'd be okay with them putting it down at that point. No. So they got, we'll they see. have like, they only have like eight games. The <laughs> there's like a, there's like a multiplayer game too, right? <clears throat> multiplayer. And we also assume an MMO at NC soft cell so. phone game. I maybe like a cell, like a <laughs> kind of like a Genshin impact, like a cell phone and like yeah. a console version. Okay, but we got to we got to talk about this, John. <clears throat> Anytime somebody tries to sell a PlayStation Five dev kit on eBay, normally it gets struck down. Like Sony will step in and and get the listing taken off. Apparently, I didn't really read too much into this. Apparently, one did go through, and they were very strategic with this. They went under the radar, as it were, because they tried to market this thing as not a PS5 dev kit, but a PlayStation 5 pizza heating station, because we all know what the dev kit looks like, where it has the uh, perfect triangle cut out with fans to sit on the the point at your uh, proposed pizza slice to heat up the, (laughs) to reheat your cook or cook your pizza. So somebody made the listing, you know, and and I just tried to paint it in a certain way where it wouldn't get taken down. I guess it went through all the way and it sold for like what six thousand pounds or something. Yeah. You, have the, you have a listing up right now. <laughs> Some people were saying that it was an like it was an old listing. I had not seen this before myself, so I thought it was funny when it popped. Just just I don't even really care when it when it was listed or sold. I just think it's hilarious, like the yeah, idea of this, uh, because it is it is the classic mustache glasses disguise you know it's it's so because you can't do anything with it once you hook this up and it connects the internet and calls back to home basically sony knows which dev kit it is they know who they issued it to and they can just lock it out basically my mac address so it won't it's not going to do anything but if you're a collector which i mean that's probably why this sold at that price point the person knew it wasn't a pizza station they knew it was a <laughs> PS5 dev kit. And if they are just buying it to put on a shelf somewhere 
and just be like, look what I have. I got the dev kit, put it in my archive of PlayStation Harbor. They're probably more than happy enough with that, right? What I, a ridiculous thing, though, to show up in the news. Yeah, I, I would presume that's like if it, if, it, if it actually did sold and went to somebody, I, I would assume that's what it was for, because these things are effectively useless nowadays. Um, yeah, you, you can't even really tinker with it as far as I'm aware. So like a tinker offline, I, I should say. But it, it does look silly. Yeah, to correct myself, it sold for six thousand euro uh, or approximately Jeez. Nine thousand six hundred Australian. I just wanted to see dollars. the listing because I wanted to see what the description said. Like if they tried to describe oh, yeah. it in like some crazy way. I wonder if this really did go through. I really didn't look into this, so I have no idea if it. Uh, I mean, I just funny. wanted somebody to link to it. I, that's what I said. Some people are saying it was like an older list because if it's an older listing, eBay only keeps it around for I think two months like the description i feel like it's 60 days and then after that they just delete the listing like the description and stuff you can still see it like you can see what it sold for and stuff john i think this is old yeah okay that's that's what i was thinking yeah but no one really noticed it yeah well you know it gained some traction i i almost feel ashamed now this is from my boy lance mcdonald he put this up back in 2021 why it's so weird how did i i feel like i must have definitely saw this before now i'm just now seeing it again so I guess it wasn't old. Did listing. he get the full? Did it, it was just a picture? He didn't get like the full description or anything of it. I mm, I, don't, I could ask yeah. him, but he, he's got more pictures of it listed. <laughs> I'm such a dumb dumb. This is why yeah, I, I, I added the caveat that like I didn't look into this. Now that I looked into it, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, it's still a lot of people missed it, and yeah. uh, it's just a funny thing to bring up. It's not like you're like here's the serious news: a pizza station sold the other day. It's like. Look at this ridiculous listing. Yes, maybe yeah. from a couple of years ago, but it's funny. Oh, Push Square reposted it. Well, not reposted it. They put it up as new news. So yeah, somebody Push funny. Square wasn't doing their. Uh, somebody their corrected work. me because I I I noticed it and brought it up with like a quick piece of news and I'm like, oh, that's an older listing. Like, oh, okay. Well, I'll check it out. There you go. It's still hilarious because they funny. really yeah. the pizza slice where where it's supposed to go. Hey, <laughs> well, knew it's finest. <laughs> yeah that's that's what we'd, that's what that's what i would call it i mean you uh, made a you made a griddle or grill ps3 grill didn't you i made a ps4 and a ps5 one okay we need a pizza station playstation 5 pizza station i, I i'd like to get those dive kits just so goddamn pricey yeah they are <laughs> all right john i think we are getting ready to jump into our our Best segment here, arguably mm -hmm. on the show, mm -hmm. PSX, go and give it to you, mm -hmm. where we dive into some PlayStation history, teach the kids what's going on in the PlayStation landscape, some old, you know, weird, obscure topics or things that were maybe a little bit unusual or thought provoking. This one, I'm sure you do remember. Um, I wanted to talk about Core, the digital magazine for PlayStation 3. Do you remember this? I remember Core. I did not yeah. buy Core. <laughs> no, I and and why would you? It was a very strange thing. So for those that don't remember, and I'm sure many of you do, because this was kind of a weird suppressed PS3 memory, but Core was a digital magazine that launched in June 2008 on PS3's PlayStation Store. Um, this was basically replacing like the jump pack for like PS1 and PS2, and those were like discs where they would print, you know, interviews and, and demos and things like that on there. So this was the PS3 version of that that came out in 2008. So Core had like HD trailers and interviews and behind the scene videos and demos and betas, um, which they also had like formal hosts. So like at the time it was Veronica Belmont, which uh, even back then she was pretty well known. But Veronica Belmont would host this thing. Then it was Audrey Cleo, which Audrey Cleo also used to do uh, Pulse, which was, I think, a weekly series on PSN, which was like a five minute little video talking about like the top downloads on PSN or something. But uh, she would host it. And then I guess in the later years, I, this I didn't know, but Jesse Snyder and Tiffany Smith were hosting it. But um, yeah, I mean, this was something where you could, well, I say could, you had to buy these. Uh, each episode was $3, or you could buy an annual subscription for $25. And then eventually when PS Plus came out in 2010 on PlayStation 3, uh, that was a PS Plus perk. You would get core for free with your, with your membership. But 
this was such an unusual thing because I guess in theory it does sound similar to the jump packs, which people mm-hmm. liked. Those were those were cool, right? But now it's like this like new era of online digital distribution. So like you had to go to PSN, like on the PS store, pay for this and then download it. And then it would sit as an icon on the XMB as if it's a game, launch it. And then, uh-huh. you, and you paid for advertisements. You, you paid for like HD trailers <laughs> and interviews that somebody could easily just like archive and throw up on YouTube, which people were doing obviously. And like the, the one thing you, you couldn't do is like when you did get beta access or like demos, like they would offer right. demos or things like that. But core was such a very strange thing. I think even back then, is right? this, I'm picturing, is this when the PlayStation store at that time was basically like a website like that you would like launch? Is that around that time? No, uh, the 2008, this would be post uh, the first store redesign. First store. Okay. That's yeah. what, okay. That's what I'm envisioning right now. All right. I did I did not have core though. I I briefly saw it on the store, but I did not I did not get it yeah. and go through. As you mentioned, there was YouTube and I did get the occasional magazine here and there because around that time I was at a I was I feel like I was at I would have been at GameStop then and Game Informer they just gave them to us. Here's Game Informer. Here you go. Okay, cool. That's my that's my magazine. That's my that's my in the know at the time, but uh even like PS3 with core the digital distribution side of it that is that is an interesting it's an interesting moment in history that i was not part of <laughs> <laughs> which uh caveat for those that don't know and they want to look this up when you look it up it's spelled q o r e but pronounced core q o r e core i see it q it's a red yep. circle mhm and they did that for oh, 4 a years shot of it they they oh, did no, this oh it's in 320 <laughs> that's the actual resolution now <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It, they did like 40 or 50 episodes of this and it's like well prior to ps plus like i don't think many people were, were paying for this but it's weird to think about right three dollars then you download it and it, it sits as like as a as a game installed on your console but it's like you know just oh, look try- at all the episodes yeah, there's all. a lot. I, I see there's... them all here. Look at that. Oh, well, and all the way till 2000 or 2010, episode 42, Little Big Planet Cap. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Let's see. We had Resistance 2, the beta invitation. Yeah. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm demo early access. That was in 2008, episode two. Uh, Siphon. Wait, they just gave you a PS1 classic voucher for a Siphon Filter? Yes, I do remember that. They gave away that game with. Uh... With a core episode, high like, velocity bowling is a full <laughs> PSN game voucher. Well, the the funny thing is that like sometimes it would be like okay, like that's that's kind of cool, right? But then other mm-hmm. times, like so, like the, the people have archived these episodes. Like you you can just like watch them on YouTube. Like the things that you can watch, obviously, mm-hmm. since you you can't like do the betas or anything. But like the full upload would be like maybe like some of the worst episodes are like twenty minutes. Like you'd pay three dollars for like twenty minutes of like advertisements. Plus there were advertisements like in core, not even so much like like ads on top of ads. Like you would get the trailer for like a cool game that you you were looking forward to and like behind the scenes. And sometimes they would do like a package of like pictures, I believe. So you'd get like concept art. You'd get that stuff. But sometimes you would get served an ad <laughs> before you could watch. <laughs> Before you could watch that stuff, if I remember correctly, I've not actually booted up a core episode in a long time. Okay, so this I do remember this the Mag beta invitation. Uh huh. September to that I remember when Mag got a beta, and that you needed to do something special to get it. So it was core. That's what I was thinking of. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Ah, oh, that screenshot looks so. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the the screenshot here for the core network looks so like playstation 3 early like online era <laughs> for yeah. stores it's crazy like there's like a little menu you go through it looks like a dvd menu that's what i'm thinking of it, yeah it, basically it's 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 so it's weird right like i i remember distinctly even back then how like bizarre it was like it, it just seemed like it was well definitely too expensive but then like 
to download it, which I, I guess that's it makes sense for like 2008. But you know, I, I think the the most like sensible use case would be oh, you stream that stuff. But like you weren't doing that. Like PSN back then, you could actually just straight up download trailers in general. Like the PSN page for like a lot of games, sometimes if the publisher wanted to, they would just throw up all the trailers and you could like download the trailer locally to your hard drive. Check it out. There it is. Yep. That's <laughs> right That's there. The, it's the, yeah, it's for SOCOM. There it is. June 2008 episode. Uh, ep- they have episode one up there. Look at that. There it is. There it is. You just get advertisements for $3. Soul Calibur 4 slash Afro Samurai. There's a whole lot of soul in this Namco twofer. And they, they, yeah, they'd have presenters too. So like it would open up with Veronica Belmont and she would, you know, run you through the, uh, the episode. And I guess presentation wise, it wasn't like a bad idea in theory, but it just always struck me as a very weird thing that did not stay around for very long. Other thing we can mention is that this is how Sony leaked their own PSP Go. <laughs> is there core? How did that happen? Just, I, you know what? I, I forget exactly how it happened, but basically mm-hmm. the core episode featuring PSP Go, like either it was data mined or it was released early. I, I forget exactly how it happened, but it was prior to E3. So E3 2011 is when they were going to announce PSP Go, but core leaked it which then led to Kaz Harai on stage making a joke about how he's like, oh, where have you seen this before? Or something like that. He acknowledged the, the leaks, basically. Oh, that's so funny, man. Yeah. Maybe that's after scary. that happened, they were like, you know what? We're done. That might, I mean, that's some, I mean, that's <laughs> enough to do it. You know? Okay. Here it is. Core. Here it is. May 30th, 2009. Kotaku. Core. Let's slip the first look at PSB Go. Oh, I said 2011. Tw- yeah. 2009. I see it. Okay, here we go. Uh, PSP. Yeah, I guess this is... Okay, Gamers Console Network scored a big scoop this morning, pulling the first images of the PSP Go running Little Big Planet out of the latest edition of Core, which apparently went live early. Ah, uh, there you go. That's what it was. Oh, on top of that, someone managed to film the video and place it on YouTube. Yep. Wow. Interesting. And it was okay. like... Yeah, like at that point, it's like official material, like the whole video of Veronica Belmont, like showing off the PSP Go, like it was all out there. So then by the time Sony had their the presentation, Kaz Harai had to like acknowledge it. Like, huh? It's going to be like when Astrobot gets data mined and the PS5 Pro is in there. <laughs> We're, if PS5 Pro is in Astrobot, you're going to see it before. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Things getting data mined. People can come back to this episode and be like, how did he know? <laughs> you just wait till Sly Cooper gets announced two years from now. Then it'd be really blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's core. Q-O-R-E. I mean, you can look at At least we can look this stuff up and watch the episodes now online. But in- yeah. interesting. I assume they're not accessible in any way on the PS3. You can redownload them. If it's okay. in your tr- if you're if it's in your transaction history, you can re-download them. Okay. So, hmm. I had a f- I had a few issues, not many. I'll admit, not many. Did you do an episode on Core? But I do have some. Like you do a video on it? I don't. Th- I wasn't making videos in 2008. Oh, dude, that might be a. If you have some already in like your library, that's interesting. That might be a video. I'm not sure what there is to say about it outside of how bizarre it is. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. I've, I've bizarre. only got like, I think the last time I went through my transaction history on PS3, mm-hmm. I, I only found like two episodes, but I knew I had more. So I feel like some are delisted or really mm. a lot are probably delisted. So I think that's probably what happened. But for anybody that is curious, it is archived on YouTube. You can like go on there and just watch episodes of it. Um, it's basically like a DVD menu and you just click like the trailer you want to watch or something. But that was a time where Sony was trying to sell you a digital magazine. Uh, th- I, they probably made a little something off of it. Apparently people, if they went that long, I mean, they went two, two and a half years. Should have been four. Four years? Four years. Sorry. Hold on. Two, yeah, I think in, in the yeah, 2012, 
there you go. Uh, that's not bad for a digital magazine, I guess. Now, um, here's here's my question. Would you want that as a part of a PS Plus subscription today? Okay, don't so have, if, it, if it's something that just comes with the yeah, subscription, like it's already it. there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure, why not? If it's just added value, why not? Throw it on there. If it's just something you get delivered every month, I mean, why not? It's kind of cool, I guess. Especially if they can go around and get, like... So you know how Microsoft was doing those... They do those, like, developer directs mm -hmm. where they go around to the studio, talk to the people making the games, and then they put it up in, like, their presentation format. If Sony did that, and maybe they highlighted a studio once a month or something as, like, a fun little aside, that could be kind of cool. I mean, we have to know about the games they're making, obviously. It's kind of an issue right now. But, I like, next month, could be about Team Asobi. Well, they've are, they've they've actually done that recently. Team Asobi got a video. It just goes up on their YouTube channel. They did that with uh, Team Asobi, Ben, Fire Sprite. So I mean, like, yeah, they they could like repackage that or like do a monthly thing, like do kind of more of a community outreach program for like plus members or something. But I don't know. I think in today's environment, it's like the reason why they don't is because well, they put it up on YouTube. Yeah, for everybody that's probably why yeah. for advertising purposes i don't pay know. yeah don't pay a wallet like so I very weird that. concept back then though mm -hmm. all right john that's all we got for this past uh two ish weeks a lot going on still in the world of yeah. playstation seems like it's slow but there's definitely still a number of things going on here well we're getting through the summer yeah. So we're by the time next time we record, it'll be more than halfway through July. Concord will be hitting the scene. It'll be exciting stuff then, I'm sure. Uh, now, I, as we get through this month, we get into August with Gamescom and then Tokyo Game Show, obviously, and probably some other big announcements. We're expecting hardware. I, I think things will be picking up as we go along, obviously, and then we'll get Astrobot and some game and game releases. So it's uh, everybody back from vacation. Yeah, not bad. Still, still two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Now these episodes are getting longer and longer every time. Now they are. They are. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff happening. But that's uh, that's yeah. That's our episode for Click R three, number three. Three episodes in the books. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll be back in a couple of weeks to talk about Concord, and then everything else that happens in, in gaming with PlayStation. So we'll catch you guys then.